It's been quite a while since I've said this to you. Green May to you, my good sir. Oh, and a green May to you, my good sir. I I fucking love Green May, man. I've been looking forward to Green May for 11 months. How about you? Green May is so good. And especially, I mean, the the two guests that I've got banked, no matter how badly we mm. fuck up the second half of the month, it's going to be a great It's a tis a fine Green May to us all. Tis a fine Green May. We have, we have already uh we're winning. Green May right we now. Are, we're we're already, are. Hashtag winning. That's what we they are say, right? We're hashtag winning Green May right now. <laughs> you know what? Green May was so good last year that it has the sort of load, not the loaded feeling, but you know, I, I already associate so many positive memories with Green May. It has the vibe of like a true festive season. It you is. know, where it's, you're like, all the traditions that I love, talking about Green Day, listening to Green Day. Watching Green Day music videos. I'll tell. I'm going to tell G Chat only. I'm going to tell you the only other month that I actually think we should repeat again, assuming we make it. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. I think that's <laughs> that's those are my ideas. Yes, um, that's a good idea. Okay, so it's Green May. You know, I was thinking, why did they call their band Green May when the Green uh, Day happens in March? Why aren't they called Green March? Uh, this oh, band? sorry, hey, I accidentally clicked. I clicked ahead into a parody. Uh, sorry, why say that again? I was panicking. <laughs> So, I didn't know, want to hear. I I feel like what maybe I, just, I should say it, but the fact that I just <laughs> the fact that I thought of that joke earlier, and then still said it. The idea of repeating it again, knowing and how I bad it, it is, by no, almost the idea of repeating it again is one layer too depressing, even for me. <laughs> okay, so I think, well, so just know all the listeners, you got to enjoy a joke that I missed, um, we, which is probably not the first time that's happened. You know, I actually don't know if you would have done a courtesy laugh or if you would have done a okay, oh, okay. You know, the, sometimes you do that kind of thing. Oh, okay, mm. kind of, mm. uh, it's, and that one, that really, that's what motivates me to keep going is when I get those. <laughs> if I don't get a courtesy laugh out of Sam, I gotta, I You're that like, just oh, drives no. me. I got a pit in my stomach. All right, here's a section called punk news. Punk news. I've heard of New Punk, uh, the new bands coming out nowadays, and I've heard of Post Punk, um, and Posts are kind of what News does, the National Post, and I've heard of um, the Printed Press, which gave Uh way to uh, fanzines of the 1900s. We're gonna, I would think we'll talk about <laughs> we'll talk about centuries and confusion about centuries. I think this week because I'm confused about them. Um, but uh, punk news is kind of a thing that we invented. We took these two ideas, punk and news, put them together. We talk about the news of the week that's punk. Now I'm going to go maximum topical and start us off. This, I wonder if this is the one you had earlier before I made a switch for uh, for. Um, Oh, I thought about this one. I actually didn't. I was I, I was this worried one it was too had topical. me fuming. Actually, how this really? one? Well, well, I guess it's only trending one hundred and twenty-two thousand views right now, but it is trending. Posted eight mm. hours ago, and when I looked at Twitter, by the way, our exclusive doing going gangbusters because we oh, it's uh, a big exclusive. We sunk, big guest. We lowered ourselves to have a Twitter guest uh, this week. This week, <laughs> we're pandering, <laughs> pandering to the masses. Uh, Pandering the timeline. Yeah, we did get um, Ivan to come on and talk about r slash punk, the Reddit punk community. I think it was hilarious, honestly. Um, I think it was very upsetting and enraging and great. So We giggled. We did a lot. There's a lot of giggling going on. Thank you, Ivan. Check it out. Patreon.com slash 155pod. Um, <clears throat> but this is trending on Twitter right now. I don't know if it's because my... Twitter is so punk that that's why it's trending to me. As we are doing this episode, the Met Gala is happening. Travis Barker is wearing a skirt, looking incredible. I honestly think mm. I just got to put this on the record. I've been saying it kind of in private. I've been saying it to my wife. I've been saying it to the Discord. I just want to put this on record that definitely, like, now that we're deep into the 2020s, Travis Barker is hands down the coolest member of Blink-182 and my favorite. No irony whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Like, he's like... Yo, he looks fucking awesome, actually. He's thriving. He's so cool. What a fit. He's Because, look, I've I've been paying attention a little bit to these these Met looks. The gilded... The the, the guild? What's the theme? It's like a union. It's a pro-union. I don't know. Yeah. 
Riz Ahmed um, was on some soapbox about it. Whatever. Interesting. Um, but it definitely, like, it seemed like a lot of a lot of the men had been. There were some misses. This is a this is a direct hit. Yes, yeah. <laughs> There's one. This is one Mister who didn't have misses, but he will have misses uh, soon. Name uh, <laughs> some, uh, Courtney Kardashian. No, so the, the Met Gala is happening right now. Travis is thriving. I I really do just want to hammer home. Travis is my favorite member of Blink One Eighty Two. No irony, no joke. He's fucking cool as hell, and he's killing it. And I'm watching the Kardashians every week to see Trav, and I'm loving every minute of it. I mean, it's just it's Travis season, a hundred percent. But this is just like, did you actually look at this? It's such bullshit. I. I'm I'm skimming through it. This I, is I, Matt, I also in this is Matt check, Stoppera, I who's I this name is so familiar. This this journalist Matt Stoppera, uh, I mean it's just a name you remember, but I feel like I've seen I, I don't know. This is a name I've seen on Twitter. This is like some BuzzFeed stuff that just like gets into your feed. It's like, like a BuzzFeed type of writer who like probably filmed somebody breaking up on a plane and it was fake. Yeah, I mean I'm looking at like for example all all the the the, the top. Matt Stapera posts on BuzzFeed are all like the sorts of things that you see at the end of like their outbrain links at the end of um, like uh, an already bad clickbait article that you've clicked on at Vulture. <laughs> um, and it looks like most most of the writing is about the Met Gala. OK. Like 49 okay. celebrity couples you totally forgot went to the Met Gala together because they've long since broken up. And it's just 49 pictures of other celebrities. Like, <laughs> well, that's, damn, Jennifer that's Lopez a, and Mark Anthony. I didn't forget that they broke up. That's a very famous celebrity couple. That's the thing about Matt Stopera here. Stopera, as I call it. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, but I, there's not a whole lot of writing going on. So the, all the writing seems to be in the headline, which is so annoying. Like in 2022, you're saying did not understand the assignment. I mean, that's at least from January 2022, probably. It's, it feels that feels like 100 years ago at this point. Here's the headline mm-hmm. for this. Nine years, yeah. ago, nine years ago, the Met Gala theme was punk, which I'm still thinking about in 2022 because some of these people clearly did not understand the assignment. Then we get a subhead. As always, some people got it. Some people didn't. Uh, and then it says, one of my all-time favorite Met Gala themes was 2013's Punk, Chaos to Couture. Uh, that theme was particularly memorable because it was funny to see how the rich and famous interpreted punk. That's all of the text. And then it's just every single photo of every person from the event. Amazing. Isn't that weird? Like, does that, is that? I fucking love Buzz. Like, look, look, just like something like this is such a perfect, because we look at, there's been no shortage of, uh, Journalism is uh, like a heart surgery or whatever. Like journalism is is like uh, you know a volunteer work, yeah, uh, right. saving the world. Or I'm trying to think, what's the most? What is the most noble job? What probably it probably most, is journalism or podcaster. Yeah, or, or maybe like, like police punk. policeman tabling um, at a zine fair. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Here, hold on. What does Cora say? The most noble profession is teacher, mentor, guide, counselor. All right. Okay, I get. Well, that. that's so, teacher. Okay, teacher, mentor, guide, counselor. Combine all those. What do you get? Journalist. So there you go. Yeah, that's true. That's true, and that's why it's the noblest profession. And so, <laughs> just like BuzzFeed is one of the many platforms that we should hire heroes from, or whatever. I fucking love like just. That's this. true. I guess you're right. I think I just like was hoping that it would at least have like the gif of Jonah Hill doing the can't evening hands. Yeah, uh, there's not even, there's, there's nothing. nothing. It's like a purely neutral post that is just like gaming the system. Just, it has like 50 words at the start. And then to be fair, like, yeah, none of these people look very punk, but you could have had fun like dunking on them or like done anything instead of just posting, you know, how many are there? Oh, there's Gavin and Gwen. Oh, they were still together back then. Uh, 69, 70, 71. I mean, it's just like, how many f- how many fucking photos are on here? This is insane. <laughs> There's so many. It's ninety two, is- and the and that, that's the only. Oh, Cy so was there. The only commentary is at the very end, and last but certainly not east, least, <laughs> yeast. Sorry, that's like, yeast. Yeah. Last but certainly not least, <laughs> Kim's first appearance ever at the Met Gala with Kanye, and so that's kind of like. The only editorializing is pointing out that it was Kim's first ever appearance. I mean, this even birthed us the incredible quote of Kim describing herself as punk because Lady Gaga said that we've played that on the show before many times. I feel like that's almost the thesis statement for the current iteration of the show is Kim saying that she thinks she's punk. 
Um, but none of that's here. This is just 92 embedded Getty images with a small caption at the top and it's trending right now and maybe you're right maybe i've maybe saying that out loud i have been won over respect to you matt stopra for <laughs> yeah, understanding like, the assignment <laughs> truly like do they just scrape are they in are they in alphabetical order or is this like order of arrivals like i mean it's just it's just yeah because at some true. point you have you know the members of blondie were there but there's no sort of additional yeah. Um, it was like, okay. And thing. then, like, there's also opportunities because you're like, Minka Kelly. Like, oh, damn, Minka Kelly was that famous in 2013. Like, there's, you could write a line about be, Minka Kelly. There's so many the funny captions to be had. Met Galley? Jesus Christ, my <laughs> Met Galley. Met, <laughs> Met Galley. Um, oh, Christina Ricci. You know, I, I didn't realize that she attended once with Chris Evans because they used to be dating. Have you forgotten that? Because Matt Stapera has not. <laughs> yeah, he did. I mean, there's nothing. So you know what? Chelsea Clinton. Respect. Once Damn. again, this is just a section about understanding journalism, and this uh-huh. is where it's at right now. You just got to post a whole bunch of images with a Has headline. Has anyone compared to dumb to dumb to to punk yet? <laughs> to dumb. <laughs> oh yeah, the Netflix thing. Netflix. <laughs> oh punk. my god. We, we can't talk no, about that. Okay, on unfortunately, here. There we can't talk about any that news here. about. Uh, to dumb, about the great to dumb and punk. Yeah. All right. No. Well, I don't want to. Nope. I don't want to start talking about that. that uh, that's for the G chat tier only. But what's okay. your punk news, Sam? <laughs> well, my punk news comes from my favorite uh, punk news source. I mean, as you know, uh, I, I love to ABC always be closing, and so I read Bloomberg. Um, <laughs> and this this article came in my uh, readings, checking out the tickers and the. <laughs> Tokers. Um, uh, Jack Bogle was a punk. Now, I don't know. Are you familiar with Jack Bogle, Josiah? I'm, because I am. As I'm a, looking as a, first of as all as a Bloomberg reader already. When it comes to using Getty images, uh, Bloomberg has absolutely uh, usurped BuzzFeed in their understandingness of the assignment here. Because yes, yeah. when you take a Getty image and illustrate it to this caliber, this degree, I mean, it looks this, good. It's incredible. It looks real, honestly. It Jack looks, Bogle looks like he's hanging out with Travis Barker and Avril. This Levine. looks like he it looks could be proper in one of, punk. It kind of looks like it would be in one of those like weird, like fake pop art galleries that show up whenever there's new condos in a big city and they always have like him with the frog <laughs> with his getting his dick sucked or whatever in the window like <laughs> yeah, Marilyn totally. Monroe but she's yeah, the getting frog. her dick sucked <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> with a dollar well, this on the dick <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, so this is the subhead here uh, the new book the bogle effect <laughs> shows just how remember the title here is Jack Bogle was punk and I guess this photoshop is of Jack Bogle yeah but punk <laughs> In the new book, The Bogle Effect, it uh, shows just how radical Vanguard's founder was and that his true legacy is the company's mutual ownership, not its beloved index funds. Because okay. you asked me before I had read this article by Eric Balchunas. I would say, now Sam, when it comes to Vanguard, uh, the financial institution, Vanguard, I mean, how radical would you say the founder was, A, and B, what would you say his true legacy is? Well, it's interesting. If you were to ask me before I read one of two articles Eric Balchunas has written this week about uh, Jack Bogle, uh, John Bogle, and oh, they, oh, I guess he, he's being friendlier and calling him Jack here. But if you're being formal, you would call him John Bogle. And, and oh, Vanguard. what's with that? Hey, changing John to Jack? It's like when people say Jack Kennedy, like they or were the, free to know. Oh, that's some Thirty Rock shit, I guess, too. Mm, yeah. Uh, so I would have said. That the true legacy of Vanguard was mm. its beloved index funds, you know. But but again, I'm a I'm a tourist in this world. Here's I what I here's like, what I, know, here's what I, I know. Think, Eric what, Balchunas. When I think of Vanguard, I think about a DIY band on tour, mm. a freaking DIY punk band, you know, different. Genders and ethnicities represent. This is a modern DIY post punk. Oh, it's like, wait, which which year of DIY? Oh, they've, like, got, so a like manager, they've got a manager. They've got a manager. They've got yeah. uh, six hundred followers on Twitter. This is a true DIY punk man. But they're on tour, <laughs> and they need somebody to sleep in the front seat of the van. They need a vanguard, and that's what I think of is the person mm. who says, "I'll, I'll, I know, you're all gonna go inside, and you're all gonna subtweet each other." I'm going to stay out here. I'm not going to get on the house Wi-Fi. I'm going to use my data to subtweet all of you, and I'll guard the van and sleep in the front seat. That's what Who I think when I think of Vanguard. Were you the Vanguard? 
I think we usually brought our stuff inside because I oh, right. I read too many blog posts about that. <laughs> it's like, it's like, that's fair. So I, look, and I don't, I'll be honest with you. For I understand everything about Vanguard mm-hmm. um, because of, of my business acumen. But but let's just read a little bit of this article for uh, other for people the, yeah, who are plebs. Absolutely. Yeah, who haven't, who aren't familiar with, with, with what Vanguard does. Let's call the them past wealth decade, simpletons, well, I think, is what we can yeah. call them. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's good. For the past decade, while cryptocurrencies, Fed policy, meme stocks, and Elon Musk ho-ho, have captured all the headlines, investors have been quietly funneling a billion dollars a day into the greatest money transfer machine in the history of capitalism. Let's go. Vanguard. Let's go. Yet the company, I thought this was uh, Patreon. <laughs> yet the company shouldn't even exist. An asset manager owned by its investors <laughs> that invests in passive indexes that charge charges only microscopic fees that's made Americans fabulously wealthy and bankrupt countless retirements without succumbing to Wall Street. Let's fucking go. The money manager now has more than $8 trillion in assets, second only to BlackRock, which it could surpass in a few years, as well as the three big funds in the world, another three in the top ten. Vanguard's influence extends well beyond the numbers on any scoreboard. Any score, No scoreboard can keep this score. The entire investing universe now bends towards the company's headquarters in sleepy Malvern, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I don't know why I can't fucking talk today. <laughs> let's, I, I let's just do some quick Apple F. And, and uh, uh, Bogle may <laughs> have looked like a friendly grandfather, but throughout his career, the words that left his mouth and some that filled his best-selling investing books were utterly punk rock. His TV hits on business networks were mostly about the futility of trying to pick stocks or time the market. He'd give a speech at an ETF conference about why ETFs were awful or trash active management at a conference for fund managers. He could be savage and stubborn. He got the boot at the only other place he ever worked, Wellington, and late in his career tangled with Vanguard's management too. So that sounds pretty punk. That sounds like some That's classic. That's all very kind of punk. Give, him, give, give him the boot? Yeah. Yeah, give him, exactly. Bogle shared something else with punk, the concept of addition by subtraction. So kind of math, I think, is a punk thing. Um, math As punk. Johnny Ramone once described the genre to Rolling Stone, what we did was take out everything we didn't like about rock and roll and use the rest. So there would be no blues influence, no long guitar solos, nothing that would get in the way of the songs. Punk rock was, as the magazine had previously written, a negation, a call to stark, brutal simplicity. If that doesn't describe Bogle's life's work and a low-cost index fund... I don't know what does. <laughs> he built an entire genre of investing by trying to eliminate wow. everything that gets in the way of investors getting a fair share of returns, including management fees, brokers, turnover, trading costs, market timing, and human emotion. Oh, my God. I'm getting chills. from. He's kind of emo, too, wow. then, I think. He's kind of the original emo punker. Mm, um, yeah. You, they tried to get rid of emotion, but they were not successful. <laughs> So, yeah, let's all respect to Jack Bogle. May he rest in peace. Or, you know, if he's still alive, he'll is probably he, is rest he alive? in peace. Yeah, if he hold is, on. maybe he rests in peace probably fairly soon or in the next, you know, decade, probably, realistically. Was um, it Jack Bogle or Vogel? B O G L E. No, you're thinking of Scott Vogel from Terror. <laughs> That's, yeah. That's terror, <laughs> the, the wokest, the wokest <laughs> band. Uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, Johnny Jack uh, Vogel uh, has Vogel. died. Uh, may he rest not, in peace. Not while we were podcasting. Poor. Uh, <laughs> a few years ago. What did he like? Did he go out like Sid and Nancy style or did he use like, some kind of <laughs> epic punk? Uh, end to him let's or? see personal life he died uh i think he just died old unfortunately. oh yeah oh not, it's in the not, article actually i guess that's why we shouldn't skip ahead we could have seen he died at the age of 89 in 2019 that means he was born probably on a year uh ending in a zero can't really do the math right now that was punk mm-hmm. news now speaking of math um 21 guns. That's sh- a lot of guns. Hey? It's, uh, if you were to ask me how many guns, uh, certainly 21 is, is a higher number than I would pick. If you had to pick how many how guns. Many, how many okay, guns yeah, how many guns? Okay, if I had said to you, Sam, how many guns do you want? You'd probably say zero because you you love troops, but you hate the fighting. Kind of like a love the sinner, <laughs> yeah, exactly. hate the sin thing. Well, and I love the troops because they do, they do the fighting for me. You know, it's sort of like... Um, you know, I, I pay them to do the dirty work of trooping, uh, <laughs> so I can still get into heaven. Can you get into heaven if you own guns? I think so, probably. I mean, it doesn't really work like that. It's kind of more about like you know 
be what you forgiven. do with the gun. Well, it's more about just kind of getting forgiven for stuff. So, oh, you know, we'll figure, we'll figure it all out later. But, um, okay. I, I would say, I would say, like, max guns, like, if, if I had to guns, I would go two guns, John Woo oh, style. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's, that's how many guns. Akimbo, for me. I think, is what it's called in video games. I only mm. know about guns and sports from video games, and I'm not usually really paying attention. So I only kind of know a little bit. <laughs> But what I yeah. was thinking about it was like, why is the number twenty one always popping up? You got twenty one guns, twenty one mm-hmm. uh, pilots, twenty one yeah. savage. Uh, yeah, I think there was other ones. Twenty one the legal drinking age in in America. That's true. That's also true. Twenty um, one numerology. Let's see. Let's see what the numerologists of the word world have to have to say about this. Well, okay, we're talking about affinitynumerology dot com. Okay. Yeah, that's oh, did you already have they? something? Have no, already, I, I don't. No, that's the, that's the next thing I'm going to show you. We can f- finish this thought. Okay. So uh, the the numerology number twenty one is both a creative spirit and a mostly mostly that's interesting. They're hedging reliable partner. Uh, okay, so uh, in situations where the two conflict, the creative spirit generally prevails. Blah blah blah. Tw- creative self expression, optimism. Um, this is not. This is. I mean, the Not numerology so stuff. I just wanted to show you this this nice little, because, you know, we're kind of thinking about R slash lately, uh, R mm-hmm. slash punk, R slash, R slash fic, the slash fiction about you and I, R slash fic. Our slash, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so then I was just searching because I was like thinking, you know, maybe people have talked about this before, all these 21s everywhere. And this is a, a post that I found on R slash random thoughts uh, from seven months ago. And it's had no interactions whatsoever. This is by Brown Boy C. And I thought, that's so cute. Brown Boy C put, I always mix up 21 Guns, the song, with 21 Pilots, the band. And it's just like such a cute post that is just like, I just think it deserves to be highlighted. I'm going to give it an upvote. Yeah. I mean, should we comment on it? Would that reveal what your, what's your Reddit username? Is, is that I a can't secret? Tell you that. Yeah, I would love. Yeah, it. Can I see who upvoted this? I wonder if I can. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've like literally ever even written anything. Oh, on I can't. Reddit, but you, I, you can't even upvote because it's archived because no one cares about oh, it. Oh yeah, when I hit it, nothing happened. That's so sad. Um, so yeah, Wait, I just so what do you use no, Reddit for? What What do you mean? Like I, I, I subscribe to some subreddits and like once a week I'm ones? like I should look at Reddit and I do. What and, ones? Um, M G O T W. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. All the <laughs> classics. Um, my my bigger concern is I, I feel like, and this is maybe I'm going to regret this. I think I do use the Reddit username um, on other sites where I have just like various fake accounts, and so uh, oh, I feel what? like I would be oh. there's a there's a web that I would perhaps be. Um, what kind of? Su- oh my god! Is this like? Are we going getting into nasty Sammy territory? <laughs> As to, no, because we've never been in nasty Sammy territory because that doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> well, um, nasty Sammy territory is also just like one of the vilest phrases I've ever heard. <laughs> that's going to be exclusive one day. We'll go. We'll all go. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, all yeah, take a trip to nasty Sammy territory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking, yeah. I don't know. Then I then I realized that twenty one gun like a twenty one gun salute is like a thing that you do if like. I don't know if you do something in a war. I don't know if it's good. If you win a war ball, I guess we'll call it. They do a twenty-one gun salute, or maybe yeah. if you die. Is it because you died that you get one? Do you uh, know? Well, off the top of my head, I think a twenty-one gun salute mm-hmm. is most commonly recognized as uh, a cu- the customary gun salutes that are performed right. by the firing of cannons or artillery as a military honor. Honor. So, like. I really actually can't talk today. This is horrifying. I keep ending every word with like the wrong I consonant like it. sound. It's because you want to go to uh, nasty Sammy territory. And I think we it's because I've got nasty Sammy brain right now. <laughs> and so as naval customs evolved, 21 guns came to be fired for heads of state or in exceptional circumstances for heads of government with the number decreasing with the rank of the recipient of the honor. So, oh. so like, I guess if you were the head of state, you know, you get 21, but like you and I as podcasters would get like two guns. So here's what I have to say about the number 21 and the album, twenty uh, the 21 Guns song by Green Day for Green May it comes from the album 21, 21st Century Breakdown, right? That's mm-hmm. what it's from. I, yeah. I have always 
it's one of those things that I've just kind of given up and accepted as fact, but I feel like I will be completely frozen and start drooling on myself if I try to actually like quantify why the century, why the centuries are named the number that they are. Like, I don't understand why 1995 was 20th century. I, why is it always ahead? I don't get it. And I hate it so much. And I just need to come clean about this. I really fucking hate that where it's the tooth. It's two zero at the start of the year, but we're in the 21st century. And I fucking hate that. I listen. I, I feel the exact same way as you. I find it confusing the way I find 24 hour time confusing where I like, I have to do math to make it make sense. And I, I would tell you, like, if you were point blank to have started this, you kind of hinted that you were stressed about this. And so I already worked it out in my head. But if you had just like started this off and been like direct about whether or not the 21st century was now or before, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> right. I really wouldn't no, have known. It's, to me, it seems like it should start at 2100. 21st. But it's sort That's, of like how you you and I are in our I don't don't know how old I am, but like you're 30 37. what first 31st year, you know? <laughs> no, we're getting live. Like age. you're 30 you, we are 30, but we are in our 31st year. Um well, okay. So you got to you got to subtract one. But I hate that. And then you get uh, no, the century. No, I hate that so much. You should <laughs> yeah, you just take the, you if take you're going to do that, you should be you're one in. when you're born. You need to be one when you're born. I I think that would be great. Just, That's, yeah, but then, but then you get up with these like soft, pampered, you know, uh, young people th- born on first base. You know, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, that's, it's that's why society true. is crumbling. I mean, that is true. So, so is that a, is that a century, a century thing then? Because we're starting. I think it's a century. Yeah, maybe the so century if, thing is why society's crumbling. Then everyone is just ahead mm, of them. It's or a breakdown. Everyone's ahead by a century. <laughs> oh my god, we did. I thought it. You, you already said it earlier. I didn't know. Oh. I didn't mean to. Uh, is that what he meant? Traipsing around in Gord Downey's backyard. We'll never know. Is that what he was trying to tell us? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think I that was the it. point. It's really confusing, and I hate it so much. And I feel like we could just end the episode here with me just saying I really hate that. I think we should get rid of whatever that even is, the century thing. I mean, why, do we, why are we even naming them, really? You know? It's not, um, it, it, they're, they're not worth naming. Absolutely not. I, I just don't understand who's like, because what do you need the designation for? Like, I can understand it in a general sense, like that it would come up, but like, does it come up so often? Like, are, are you needing to orient here, I'm, yourself I'm not in, ju- in a hundred year time span that often? I'm seriously about to go into fetal position from what I just read from Googling this. The second century began with the year AD 101, while the period 1900 to 1999 is, of course, a century, as is any period of 100 years. It is incorrect to label it the 20th century, which began January 1st, 1901, and will end on December 31st, 2000. Only then will the third millennium of our era begin. So also Google's serving me facts that are from Y2K, it seems, which is interesting. Mm. But uh, that really upsets me, what I just read. Uh, yeah, this is... No, the, I don't like any I don't like the any The period of, of 1900 but, to 1999 is, of course, a century, as is any period of 100 years. But that's, nine, that's 99 years, isn't it? Doesn't a hundred years happen on the day? Yeah, this feels a little like there's like leap centuries or something. <laughs> what is happening? I hate it so much. But like also what I'm saying is like, what is the point? Like how often are you thinking like years? I get it. And we put up with a lot of bullshit from years. Yeah. Because we agree that it's like a really helpful way of orienting yourself in space time. But I but guess like, like why did Green Day call their album thinking this? about what century it is? But then why did they do this? And then also... 20th century schizoid man. Okay, that's from that's from older King Crimson. But the, they called it 21st century breakdown, and then they called the song 21 Guns, and they don't want me to be thinking about 21 and and what it all means. That's fucked. Mm. That's well, maybe they fucked. were thinking. Yeah. Listen, I, I wish it turned out that it was like some satanic stuff. That would be way cooler. Where I was like, ooh, 21 is like, oh, great, it's so punk, and bringing back. Danger, as opposed to bringing back Queen and kissing graffiti. 21 Guns is a song by American rock band Green Day. It was released as the <laughs> second single from their eighth studio album, 21st Century Breakdown. I do not like that. And serves as the 16th track from the album. The single was released through Reprise Records on May 25th, 2009 as a digital download 
and July 14th, 2009 is a CD single. I was trying to see if Exclaim reviewed this album, but uh, Sam Sutherland wrote the timeline on it, which is like... And I don't think I reviewed it because I remember, yeah, you 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 messaged me today and, and when you realized I wrote the timeline, which we put out uh, around, it was pegged on this record. But I remember this is like one of the only albums that I've been invited to a proper listening party for because mostly when you and I wrote for Exclaim, we were reviewing like five albums by the Nats. Like no one, no one cared. But you, you know when you read Rolling Stone or Spin and they'd describe like being flown somewhere yeah. to sit in a room and listen to like Chinese democracy or whatever. And so well, you I didn't have to be racist flown. about it, but yeah, <laughs> uh, I didn't get full. This was like just in Toronto, but it was like a, okay, you know, me and the music critics for like the Toronto star, the Toronto sun, and probably the national post punk news got to, got to like get free Pepsis and listen to this in like That's a so dark room, sick. which is, so fucking boring. Like, you, <laughs> I when we, just sitting in a room with some strangers, like listening to an album, pretending to make notes about it, like fucking terrible. Try like interviewing people uh, from like Moonlight with like six of the biggest fail sons of Canadian media from different like upstart film magazines. Like doing a group interview, it's it's. In- well, I mean, actually, it's kind of incredible. It's a great self esteem <laughs> boost to be doing it. With, Did like, you? you- in my mind, your junket interviews are always basically like the Simpsons thing where it's like, really, really, really? Those are your three questions. Like, <laughs> um, you, uh, yeah, you, you've certainly been through it like that process more than I, but this was like my only time doing it. I remember being just like absolutely appalled by everything about this record. Cause I really liked American idiot. I was, I was like all over that album. We talked about this last green may, but like, in, you know, I think we made that our number one punk album of the year two years previous in Exclaim. Like, very hot, very high on that album. And then mm. this, I remember like, when I, I remember, gamed the. I remember when I gamed the voting to make sure Career Suicide attempted suicide got number one a different year. But I guess it's just kind of the difference. how did you game the vote? It's kind of different between. I would just so he's like I would always do that. I always check because it was like weighted because they were such nerds, and I would just like put whatever I thought should win at the very top. And then whatever was popular oh, and then that you I liked. at least end up at like nine. Yeah, or exactly. Because, yeah. Yeah. I think no one voted for punk records that year. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just trying yeah, to say I'm cooler a, than you is all I'm trying to say. Look at, I, I look at, I'm saying I, I like green day. You like career. Who's who even is career. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> You're freaking neighbors. Um, Sam, Tell me I know. Th- I live in like a. It turns out I've moved into a real punk rock mecca. I'm kind of realizing as we talk that this is a like a pretty pro Green Day uh, guest and possibly episode. So it's kind of interesting to be talking about this. But people do hate this album, right? I don't think I've ever heard it. I know that I've, I've yeah. Re- so I've I've heard I heard it in its entirety, and I remember be realizing like fully in, in especially if you've traveled. Maybe that's terrible. Like you've traveled. I traveled like I took. I took like it was like two subway stops or something. Oh, okay. I didn't travel for it. It wasn't like you flew to um, LA or something. No, if I flew to LA for it, I wouldn't care. I'd be like this fucking. I probably would have loved the record if I got yeah. flown to LA. That's the whole fucking. <laughs> that's why you do those things. It's like a social contract. So I didn't get flown anywhere. All I got was like a like a like a you know room temperature can of Pepsi, and this album when you hear it. It's it's so obviously all of the worst things about American Idiot. Like it just takes all of the bombosity and and the, the grandiosity and the the sort of like playing for the rafters. Sam's kind got of, his music you know, music writer hat on right now. It takes its angular guitars, right, <laughs> and braggadocious <laughs> slashes them. Yes, the 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 Billy Jones braggadocious. It's so it, it's it's so. At the time, I felt, and listen, I've not gone back and listened to 21st Century Breakdown. I think there's a, I'm pretty sure there's like a full, a full N-word in the lyrics somewhere. So that's. I mean, that seems. That might be a fun thing to go back and look for. Yeah. You know who has an N-word in one of their songs? And it's like, you know, could probably be said in quotes. It is Junior Battles, and I regret (laughs) it, and this is, I wanted to say it. Um, no, just like at some point recently, I was listening to some uh, older propaganda, and there's definitely a propaganda song with the N word in it because wow. it's being used the same way that presumably right, like, I'm Green Day it. it. Yeah, like I'm just saying it because they say it in their <laughs> rap songs. What I'm not allowed to exactly... sing along to watch the throne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, I like music. 
<laughs> you know that Green Day song about how you're not allowed to sing along to watch the throw? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> I think so, it's called minority. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that is absolutely it. So here's the thing. Did not care for this record as it's as it uh, as it was played for me in this in this weird room, and have never returned to it. However, part of it is like the Broadway idiot. Pilling that mm-hmm. I endured over, mm-hmm. like over the like, I like listen to the American Idiot on Broadway soundtrack. Like I don't want to say regularly, but semi regularly. Like I think it fucking bangs. And there's like a th- that last of the American Girl song, which is also on this record. And I can just go ahead because I don't think we're probably going to do that this Green May. Like there are songs on this that are good, and I actually kind of now think the Twenty One Guns. Dude, I, just, well, like I, I legitimately fucking, sick song. I love twenty. <laughs> like, I, fucking, I absolutely yeah. love Twenty One Guns, and I absolutely love it because of the cast recording that we're gonna watch in a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So when I hear it good. now, I hear the cast recording. Like it's the same it's as um, so uh, good. I always loved what's her name from uh, American Idiot, but I think the cast recording like just blows out the emotion in such a perfect way. And that's what this does. Like the cast recording of 21 guns, like totally well, we'll, we'll, guns we'll, pills. We'll me. look at it in like a second. Like a hundred percent. But real quick, a couple more factoids. Uh, this song was also in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, which is very funny yes. to me. Um, and it was the second last Green Day song ever to debut on the Billboard charts, followed by Oh Love from that weird trio of albums that I've never heard. Yeah. Um, but so, like, they actually, like, like Green Day's been struggling. And I think that some of Revolution Radio was pretty good. I don't know about the the most recent uh, Unicorn one. Probably probably the not one with my cup of tea. No rap! But, um, yeah, like, I, I don't know. That, that really makes me feel sad that they've been struggling for so long. They've not been able to make it onto the charts because they seem like the kind of guys who would probably secretly care about that kind of thing. And I want them to be happy. Yeah, how, how does MGK have – yeah, MGK having two, like, back-to-back number one albums and Green Day being well, relegated I mean, to, like – you don't need to throw one punk under the bus to prop up another. <laughs> right. I mean, everyone right, yeah. punk punks punks in the bucket. I believe that. Um, <laughs> right. But then the other thing is, what I think is really funny, and another kind of unfair thing for Green Day is that they've shared songwriting credits with David Bowie because of Mott the Hoople's "All the Young Dudes." I, I think just strictly because of the uh, hitting the octave in the chorus. Like, I guess theoretically, I can kind of hear "All the Young Dudes" when he sings "Twenty One Guns," but. It's not really there, is it? I don't really hear it that much, but but David Bowie gets a songwriting credit on this, probably taking I away think some it, of that some of that punker money. Uh, I mean, Dave, come on, from punk to punk, that's a that's yeah, a well, punk to not, punk. But he's not even alive. Like, what's he gonna do with it? <laughs> that's that's true. I'm sure his estate is giving a, giving money to all kinds of notable punk causes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like it's as similar to um, all the young dudes as. Like, uh, what was what was the, the Sam Smith Tom Petty Taylor one. Swift song? Oh, okay, yeah, the Taylor, yeah, but the Taylor Swift uh, "Right Said Fred" one. Ready for it? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't remember. I, I don't remember these kinds of things anymore. But I, I think the Sam Smith uh, um, Tom Petty one was like super, super close. But I don't know about this one. Do, do you really think? Oh, look what you made me do! What a fucking jam. Uh, it's the same. I'll be honest. I actually hadn't read that. I didn't know that. That's a great new fact that you've given me here in Green May. Uh, they're the same. It's the exact same. Well, yeah. But I think this is better. This is a better song, especially the Broadway cast version with my friend John Gallagher Jr., uh, a.k.a. Yes. Jim, my homie. Oh, I was telling Ashley all about this right before we recorded. I'm so stoked. I guess we're not pretending that we are. We are we letting no, people know he's, that he's we here. Know? He's the homie because I want. I think I want to okay. play a little bit of his teen punk band too. Maybe I, yes. I didn't get permission, but also but yeah, the, like, like the like explosions in the sky ass guitar in this song is so sick. But it just feels like I think again like hearing this song in the context of like coming on the end e- like edge of Do you know what. Again, what I liked about American Idiot and listening to the Green Day version before we recorded, I was like, oh, this is such a, like, I can see why I didn't like it at the time. There's yeah. a lot of context. It's very, but like, then, schmaltzy, but in actually the sickest way. 
But that's what, like, this is what Broadway is for. Like, Broadway is for schmaltz. But I, that's what I'm saying. I think I actually, maybe because of my church background, I like the Green Day version on its own, too. Oh, yeah, I guess maybe it has. See, I, I, but now I was able to transfer my feelings. God, this is so fucking good. Like, this would have been the best song in Rent. Right. And I fucking love Rent. You know what I mean? This is better than every song in Rent. Do you think and it's that same, like, it's that modern pop musical kind of vibe. One, oh, God damn. Yeah. It's so good. But in the but Green sorry, Day Finale one, B, step aside. In the in the Green Day original, they're, they kind of, at this part, it's like the cheesy rock hits, but I feel like they're kind of revisiting, like, Brain Stew or something by doing the hits. The damn. Mm. It kind of, like, it's not totally... Unprecedented. Sound. Let's revisit Brain Stew in a real way. Oh, yeah. When you're <laughs> it's so good. Them cutting in this video to, like, because it's all, like, them, they're in the studio with the people from the Broadway show. And then it cuts to Billy Joe, and he's wearing, like, the most, like, <laughs> like two pop punk kind of uh, hat for some reason. Yeah, he looks so like cool. he looks like he's about to do a video that's like twenty one different pop punk styles. He also kind of looks like a train hopper who only listens to suicidal tendencies or something. He's <laughs> like kind of like really living in that look. Yeah. Oh, the director did some. The director is good homies with John Gallagher too. They actually developed the show together. I don't want to give away too much of the interview, but. Yeah, you don't. You, you're the, the people who are listening to it. This is where you, you actually maybe do have to conceive that someone besides me will hear it, so you can't just tell me about your. <laughs> you're never going to hear it. That's that is a thing. In, in, no, I am going to hear it. I swear to God, this is going to be what I'm going to listen to. Oh. It's so like, this good. Is, this is. Oh yeah, I forgot also that someone's wearing a Family Guy cast T-shirt in the recording. It's so yes. good. Flexing. Oh, the, the Whoa. singers of it are crying. Yeah, someone was straight up Wet crying. Eyes. They're crying for the B roll cam. That's sick. No, they were crying for themselves. Oh, oh. the yelling. <laughs> oh, <laughs> let's go. Game box. <laughs> like, is this the best? I think it's What's Your Name and This are the best. American Media on Broadway. Song, Every time right? you say that, I forget that it's a song, and I think that you're being very dismissive towards a woman who's involved with it. <laughs> As is my style. But since the song is about there being 21 guns, do you think that they wrote this knowing that they were working on the musical, <laughs> and then they could add it in? Trick cool, was like emoting is so Trick good. Just really <laughs> listening, really listening and feeling it. I don't think Lynn manuel shows up in this clip. Oh, listen to that. Oh, my God. Yes. Like, this is better than every song in Hamilton. Like, this is... The one guy is kind of dressed pretty punk. This is, like, the there's best song we've ever discussed on the show. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind. And also, that guy is from something. Which, the guy who's in the main... The guy with, the... like, the purple, purple streak in his hair. He was in something very recently. He's in American Idiot on Broadway. Well, yeah, that. Oh my God, Michael we Michael Esper. We should. Maybe we can get. Oh, he's in The Outsider on HBO. Wow. <clears throat> and he's in a show called yeah, Florida like, Man. Could you imagine what that show would be about? God damn. This is too wacky, too wacky. I uh, this is like really tricking me into thinking that I want to watch more musicals. But like, I tried to watch that. Uh, uh, it's it's boom boom time. Um, the Jonathan Larson, <laughs> yeah, Lin, Lin Manuel. Is that like Andrew everybody Garfield? poops kind of thing? Uh, it's yeah, boom yeah, boom time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I literally had to turn it off within like five minutes. And I tried to watch In the Heights. I mean, it's just the only musicals that you can stream. I guess are all Lin Manuel joints. Maybe that's part of the problem. Although it, Hamilton does rock. Well, maybe you should um, check out Spring Awakening, uh, the debut ooh. stage performance from John Gallagher Jr. Uh, it's coming back to Broadway. I think it's coming. There's a documentary coming soon to HBO Max about it, which you'll hear about later oh, in the shit. show, folks. Um, Damn. All you, right. Well, I'm going to have to listen to the show. Do you want to see the same? I don't think we're going to stick on the musical for too long because I keep ruining things by getting too excited. Do you want to see the same musical performed live on Good Morning America? Or do you want to see the Italian cast singing in English? Or do you want to see a local production Both. singing acoustic? 
I mean, I, this is just a question of which order I get to see them in. <laughs> well, the New York okay. Times has called American Idiot. Maybe the, yeah, it's like, well, How am I going to choose? Okay. And Maybe thrilling. this isn't good morning, you know America. What? I forget right. what's The show what. is nominated for three Tony Awards, including yeah, I mean, Best that's, Musical. This will probably Here be entertaining for a short period Guns, of time. The cast I'm very interested in the Italians, Idiot. and I'm very interested in the local theater production. Have There's you seen even more than on stage? This guitar is so sick at the start. Alien on stage, what's that? It's like a, a documentary about a community theater production of Alien. No. Uh, apparently it rocks. It's on Shutter, but they don't have the license for it here, and no one seems to have licensed it in Canada. I have been able to watch it. Bro, I'll incredible. find it. I know how to find it. I know you should. Every time, see, every time this uh, person is singing, whose name I would like to learn... I think that you're referring to her as what's her name, and I think you're being very disrespectful. Well, maybe she plays what's. Maybe I am even being accurate. Like, who plays what's her name in the show? Maybe I've been. I think you might have been. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, you've been nailing it. That's Rebecca Naomi Jones. Actually, is that real? Yeah, Rebecca Naomi Jones. Look at me, the Broadway head. She was also in a. TV show called Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll with John Corbett and Dennis Leary. Gotta say, the crowds around CBS's early show are not quite the crowds you get for Good Morning America. Eh? <laughs> it's true. I mean, where did they even film this? If I could think of a funny uh, area of Manhattan, I would say it here, and it'd be so good. What's the funniest area of Manhattan? Do you Hell's think? Kitchen, maybe? I don't know. Haha. <laughs> Fuck, is, okay, fuck this guy. Bring me Joe. We need to at least get to our boy, J- oh, JGJ. Okay. Is he there, do you think? Oh, yeah, there he is. There we go. Oh. Let's go. He's got some pins on his on his blazer. He's looking punk. So, you know what's funny is, like, there, there's at least two guys here kind of trying to look punk. Yeah, no, no, the other guy, guy is, like, the guy in the middle kind of looks bloke core. He's, like, contemporary uh, UK. Yeah. All right, they're killing it. I mean, they're absolutely yeah, killing absolutely it. Yeah, absolutely killing it. Uh, the, over there in Hell's Kitchen. Okay, now show me the Italians. It already looks so Italian. <laughs> really Why do they look like that? You don't have to dress like that. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> God damn, this looks uh, racist. I'm going to send uh, JGJ a cut do that's just the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming, man. <laughs> yeah, it's just a real short, uh, real short show. Does it take Do you remember? Did, you, did this come up in the interview away, that I have? You feel I have shared space so with JG. Right? What do you? It, what, what do you mean? He, he came to him and Michael Shannon came to a screening of uh, the Robert Robertson doc in you New York. It's like the last thing before the pandemic. Oh, February 2020. fuck! I forgot about that. Yeah. God I damn. Mean, no, I don't know why you should have. You should have. Hey, you went to a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you remember going to a movie with Michael Shannon once? It's almost depressing that you remember that, but I would too. So. It was a huge deal. There's like a photo of him in front of You were of like hanging movie. out with Marty all night, though. That's yeah, like, exactly. That was busy that was bigger. Okay, sorry. I'm not acknowledging. I got to give the attack. See, why do they all look like this? They kind of look more punk in a way. They do look more punk. A lot of leather. A lot of fishnets. It's such a sick song, but we're gonna hear so much more of it in a say. When you're at the All right, and then this is Amelia okay. Lilly performing Twenty One Guns for American Idiot the Musical. I think this is a smaller production. I mean, it looks like she's printed out on a printer text that says "Respect Our Diversity," then cut it out and fastened it to her shirt. Sort of a DIY. Respect your diversity, maybe it says. Mm, that's an interesting thing occurred to me. Thank you to say that me and Sam. Uh. <laughs> okay. And you feel yourself True. So is this do we know where this is from? Like what's the what's the Um I honestly didn't think we'd go this deep into the musical, but this is uploaded by J, uh, J-I-H-I Marketing. Uh, American Indian the Musical plays from 17 July at the Arts Center. Looks like this is London. 
Did you? It says, See, I, was this, I don't think this. I was hoping this would be like straight up community theater. Well, did you? Did it play in Canada? Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe we can find the the Canadian cast. Yeah, I, I definitely saw it. Well, here's this is this is, well, this, yeah, could this be good. is like a real theater in, in uh, this is like. Uh, it, can, this is Canada AM. Dot FLV. Oh, oh yes. And now Canadians are raving about American Idiot. The award-winning musical is cover based on Canada. Green Day's groundbreaking oh, album. Cover me, Canada. Canada. We'll introduce you to the Canadian cast in just a moment. First, they are live on the AM soundstage. <laughs> American Idiot dash Canada AM dot FLV is like <laughs> so good. Title-wise, that's Wait, a vibe. Oh my God, the kid from. Is this the, is one of these people from Degrassi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the kids is from Degrassi, oh. and I think one of them went to my high school, and it's like, it's very That Toronto. guy went to your high school? This guy? No, not this, uh, no, not this guy. No, that's not the Degrassi guy, is it? I can't even tell. But the Degrassi guy was in it. Wait, I think there's multiple Degrassi guys in this. Pro, every Canadian actor has been like on Degrassi. Was Jake Goldsby in this musical? Jake Goldsby was definitely involved. <laughs> Wake me up. Okay. I mean, I guess we're going to get into covers, but I've just, I've definitely found like some, I think I found at least one high school like covering it. Yeah, well, we, that, trust me, we don't need that. But um, yeah, I mean, that's just kind of talking about the musical for a second. So uh, yeah. And then real quick, I think just because while we're sort of teasing the big, in, the big inti for the guest spot, I think. I'm going to play you John Gallagher Jr.'s band from when he was a teenager, which is called Annie's Autograph. Um, so do you want to – but Sick. he doesn't play on any of the – on the studio recordings because he was just kind of like a live guitarist for a little while. You'll learn more about Annie's Autograph later, but I thought we should play a little bit of it. So let's check out maybe the song Bad Day for Us. Uh, this is Ooh. Annie's Autograph. Very sick. This one has a long intro, but maybe it'll be. I mean, you know, gotta, you gotta, you know, take us on a journey. It's true. Oh, yeah. Nope, I thought it was coming back. You'll learn all about um, Andy's autograph, the influences. Quite an interesting story with this band. What is he playing it? He plays guitar, but he was just a live guitarist for a little while. And then uh, the singer actually passed away a few years ago. And he came back to his hometown to play a show with a memorial show with them. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Oh, yeah. So you need that, you need that intro. Yes. Sick. Sick. So sick. Oh yeah! That like that like low key sounds like some shit that was on like Fear Award or something in the two, in the twenty tens like uh, yeah. mag, mass hysteria. That sounds like some uh, some distro music for sure. That's totally. like pretty hip. Um, I now realize like that's why he was able to pull off that look on on CBS. Exactly. He's got he's, CBS Hell's Kitchen. He's yeah, not faking there. it. He knows what's up. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like all I wanted to say about the song is that it's sick and it made me love the musical even more. And I love JGJ and I love Sam and Michael Shannon hanging out, hobnobbing the glory days. Um, yeah. So if I may, why don't we just quickly get into the parody zone for a second? Uh, let's do it. And then, let's we'll, get, let's and then we'll climb. Parodic. We'll climb Cover Mountain right after. Uh, so there's actually two kind of carb heavy uh, parodies. I'm just checking. I hear you typing, seeing if you're asking me for a pee break. But it looks like you're okay. No, I'm not asking for a pee break. I'm trying to find the. Yeah, here it is. I found the photo. <laughs> oh, it's sick. Wait. Okay. Let's. What is it? <laughs> it's. I just want you to see why this is. You know, it's cool. It's also like a really funny picture. <laughs> 
Right? Wait, some guy just invited himself on the pod, and he doesn't even follow oh, us. Get the fuck out of here, you nerd. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, this is from your show. Oh, my God. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying saying my, like a red carpet screening of Get, a movie that I made. Look, at there, also, the, there they are. not only Two that. Two of the greats. I, I think my boy, JGJ, I'm not just being uh, biased because he's on the pod, but I actually think for once he, someone outdressed Michael Shannon on a red carpet, like big time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he's true. killing it. He He's vibey as hell, man. They, they, they just look like, uh, you know, two fellas having a great... But look, what a look. What a, yeah. this, the jacket's great. Those, what are those lapels? Like, it's... He's got, he's got it's little, like, look. sailor lapels. He was, like, doing the yeah. lighthouse before, before fucking Robbie Pats got on it. He's killing it. Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love you can it. Tell, you can tell he's thinking untoward thoughts about some kind of sea creature in that photo. <laughs> like, absolutely. All right, there's two Carby covers. Uh... There's two Carby covers to start us up. This one is called Unbeatable Buns, and I love this man so much. He's, he's a green screen man singing his silly song, a middle-aged green screen man just having a great time. Uh, this is, uh, wa- I don't know, W-A-B-R-6. Janet's bakery is on the next block. Also, there's something about Billy Joe Armstrong's Better voice in this song that everyone can imitate it perfectly. Because <laughs> it's, like, low, and so you have a lot of... Like it's, it's, it's like a middle thing where you don't you're not like you know Matt Berenger low, but you're not like it, it's a it's impressionable. So the lyrics are in the YouTube video. There's really no joke. It's just like a list of buns. It's just about how this lady has unbeatable buns. Maybe maybe there's a double entendre, but it's not really. Foodies come from foodies come from miles around because she's got. Well, guess what? (laughs) (laughs) Like it would make sense if this was for a bake sale, but it just seems like it's just a guy having a laugh about these bones. Yeah, because like I'm skipping ahead. Like this is not a double entendre. Oh, this guy has got a lot of parodies. Self control gets Yeah, check out a WABR6. You see, I like how it's, she's got I kinda like how it's not topical. It's just like a thing. Display. It's it's very weird. Buns on display <laughs> could be you know, maybe a little bit of a hint, but it's very I would say if there was a if there was a rating between G and PG, that's where this lands, I think, to say, you know, he, he's just chilling. It's great. It's delightful. So that was uh, uh-huh. Unbeatable Buns. This is called We Need Hot Dog Buns. Um, 20 you, you want to all your- oh, this is what I accidentally skipped to. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, you the played. Parody zone. It's true. <laughs> we got to stop calling things the something zone, Maybe but, you know, we'll figure it out. So this is uploaded by Piano Sound Check. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics are also in here. <laughs> these are in piano sound check with no profile picture. Oh What's not inside my pantry door? It might be worth dying for. It might give me death today. I feel like I am levitating. Now I was thinking this part because my grandma died. <laughs> Kind of a Gogol Bordello vocal delivery. Yeah. Talking about Grandpa dying in hamburger buns, is that kind of a Blink reference? The Labor Day thing? Or? That's the, that's, I had the same thought. Like, is that, because why else is that there? Why did I let my dog buns go? There is not E. There's not N-E at my house. I forgot my comb. Great, I popped my tire. Need to raise the car higher for my own. If I don't get them, I will die. This doesn't really fly. Get the grocery cart and pie. Stupid door. So this one is kind of more, I think, uh... And also, what is this image that comes with it? It's like a bleeding arm? It's really weird. Yeah. I think it's good. <laughs> it's just like so a was cut. Oh, maybe they cut themselves yeah, on the door. Is that it? why they say I forgot my comb? No, I don't. This is <laughs> yeah, that sounds no. check. We got one comment here from Kenny, guitar guy. Lol, I like, I like. You guys are great. 
Thanks, Kenny Guitar Guy. Oh, that's nice. I like you, Piano Soundcheck. So this uh, Piano Soundcheck, a um, couple more parodies. 21 Puns. I was excited about this one. I haven't really previewed oh, it. Oh, wow. So that's, I don't, yeah, I that's I wanted to have territory. I wanted to have, I wanted to have real-time puns, so... Get to hear that nice explosions in the sky intro. <laughs> it's good. So we're gonna hear that intro a lot, eh? Yeah, I can't wait. This is it's me, Bree Bree. You know what a five I am for? It's not four. F O U R. You get your way when you. These are more like riddles than puns. Does it take your breath? Very away? unnerving delivery. I don't know if that's a pun. Someone suffocating. Oh, take your breath oh, away when a... you see someone suffocating? No, not Does really a pun. Pain, you to look outside. pain like window? Okay, okay. Through the window, your glassy eye. Okay, okay. Mm. At the Are they really puns? Does a pun. You're in ruins. I mean, it just, it's like a photo of the Coliseum. It says you're in ruins. I would say this is like light wordplay. Yeah, it's not really a pun. It needs to be a joke to be a pun. Making you laugh. One joke at a time. The singing is okay. the best part. 21, 21 puns. <laughs> the wordplay so bad that it's making you cry. Self-aware Yeah, I don't know. I don't think those are really puns, but ultimately, I liked how creepy it is. Also, this song in general is too fucking long. I mean, this this parody is five minutes and eleven seconds long. It's like an entire century of music. Oh yeah, twenty-one full centuries. So I'm really just the comments here really went off. People are like fighting about Green Day in the comments. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, it's a real. It's a. It's a hot zone. Down are they? Here. Are, what are they saying? Are they, de- are they defending uh, Green Day? Or? I think people. Um, I just want to be clear. I have nothing against Green Day. They are a great band with lots of talent and a very good sound. <laughs> this parody was not meant by any means as a disrespect to Green Day, but a simple parody just for fun, similar to what Weird Al does. I assume then you also have a problem with him parodying American Idiot, because I think if people thought that he was being rude. To right. Green Day. Well, uh, uh, Lieutenant Ace One Fifty nine years ago wrote, and this is spelled T H E I R at the start. They're a depressing band, and the singer look emo. So that's kind of a, probably a pretty good own on Green Day, I think. Hmm. <laughs> you do look emo. You do look emo, though. You, gotta... <laughs> you do look emo, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what else has been too long is this Galdern lockdown that we uh, have. I mean, I'm still locked down, and I don't think. I think people just don't invite me out anymore because I'm I've been doing the same thing for about five. It's been years. a great opportunity to cut you out of our lives. Um, but this is 121 days in lockdown. 21 guns parody. There's 18 contributors. They have not shared the lyrics, okay, and it's impossible to hear anything that they're together. saying. But um, you know, 15 gigabytes of raw data. That's not really much of a factoid. It's a seven minute video here, so let's get to the fucking point, you guys. Five hours of raw videos. Oh my god. Just insane. Zero professionals. Yeah, no kidding. And Dante. What do you say? What the f- I, There's a lot of you're not going to understand. Dante. This is a a parody where you're not going to know what any of the words are because it's just like they didn't include the lyric sheet. Mm, it's off. It's off. It's still off. Yeah, yeah I can How hear. Is that I can possible? hear the metronome. Someone wrote, "Really cool. I deeply impressed." Okay, time of the day. I heard that line. When you feel like you're wasting away. This is slower, right? Yeah. Well, of course, COVID, the pandemic. So you're already, it's getting too many people singing. Recall your last shave. What was that line? Does it feel like you live in a cave? How did they not put the lyrics in the description? <laughs> like, how did the hot dog play <laughs> happen? Some interesting outfits in here, though. 
Like the chorus it's at least. It's just making me feel <laughs> like I, I'm so high. <laughs> <laughs> Like I feel like the, 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 the tempo is like changing based on how the slowest person is singing. <laughs> it's, it's so confusing. Have you seen all of Netflix and Prime? Oh, have you seen all of Netflix and Prime? Okay, that one there was a pantomime showing the wine. Yeah, that's all. But what's the chorus? Crochet. The verses are working. Dieting. Person who's pulling like the derpiest face. Oh, <laughs> <so exciting. laughs> Look at that bass player. Yes. <laughs> this is sick. When will it end? When will, it end? when will it end? I miss my friends. Wash your hands. Like I think, I th- I think we probably got the things we did get are because we've seen so many COVID nineteen parodies that it's familiar <laughs> yeah, that's and shared true. language. Yeah, the context clues, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we listen to covers proper, I think we've already plugged it a little bit, but I just want to really let everyone know we got a nice little community brewing on, on over down at. Uh, I'm saying brewing because I've paused on this parody, and this guy is wearing some sort of barista. <laughs> Anti-fascist, like it's like barista oh, antifa yeah, yeah. shirt, and the coffee bean is the antifa thing, and that's kind of an interesting. Is it a parody of antifa? Or, I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. kind of, is it a parody of coffee? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, patreoncom slash 155 pod We're definitely making too much stuff every week, so you may as well just dip your toe. I mean, you're paying for. Uh, you know, HBO Mix or whatnot over there. You may as well add another subscription thing. Oh, what if we do like a... Unlike s- Netflix, we will never hire and fire amazing journalists <laughs> to do heroic work for Actually, us. secretly, that could be a pretty good bit to talk about. That like, actually, we should hire... <laughs> we should hire Matt Stoppera. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Off the chain fucking aggregation now but yeah patreon.com slash 155 pod take a gander you know vote with your dollars uh join the discord which only has two channels now and it's a lot better in my opinion i mean it's just totally it's it's like drinking from a fire hose now it's great it's really sam stops in there every once in a while i'm kind of always in there because i've created something where you have to check it all the time and it's really bad for my mental health uh, as with most thi- <laughs> most thi- most as with most things from the pod yeah there we go um, everyone's losing <clears throat> their ability to speak yeah so i think uh before i mean i think instead of starting with nightcore this song is not really built for nightcore in my opinion uh but there is sort of an urban legend that if you slow down billy joe armstrong's voice he sounds exactly like phineas from the hit 2007 comedy Phineas and Ferb, which ran for four seasons, Ooh. of course, on uh, Disney. I've never seen it. I don't know anything about this. Too, I'm not, like, this is the kind of thing that I'm sure people who are much younger than us know what it is. But uh, I guess so. This is based. This has over three million views. It's uploaded by Neuro Neuro D Dick, uh, but it's based on a tweet by Crimson Mayhem that has been deleted. Uh, so it's no longer there. But presumably. The whole account has been deleted. Presumably, I guess, uh, if you slow down the pitch, it sounds like Phineas of Phineas and Herb. And And they've actually animated it to make him look like a punk rocker. I mean, have you seen this show? I uh, know. Were you watching watch a lot of children's name. shows? Uh, in I don't know because I'm like a normal, normal, normal guy. You know what this character looks like to me is the le- one, the main Lemming from Lemmings, the yeah. PC game. Oh, there's even a Trey Cool cartoon guy. Lemming. 
So Phineas and Ferb was just lemmings? <laughs> Maybe. That game was cool, hey? That was fun, killing all those little guys. Letting, oh, well, you were trying to save them? But I you think? only had to save some. Yeah. So, um, so that's that. And then another thing about pop culture I've never heard of is uh, I, I made reference to them yeah, on the exclusive, but because I already don't know who they are, but Black Veil Brides, what's the deal with uh, that band? Is that like a Ronnie Radke style thing or is it like... No, I think, uh, we, I think we went through this. I don't think they're... they're I think they're just... Like are they like hair annoying. metal? Okay, they're not like what's that? Yeah, we did. What's that like hair some... metal one called? Like not eighteen I think visions. Black, I think that's Black Veil Brides too. Yeah, glam metal, heavy yeah. metal. So I think this is a yeah, Andy. So Andy, Andy Black, Black, Andy the, Six, the Andy Black from uh, the Veil Brides. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. No. No. I think he's uh, clean. He's got a clean personal. No, he's life? definitely not clean. He definitely. Uh... <laughs> All right. Well. <laughs> For the uh, for the sake of public interest, whatever you're reading right now, he did cover this song, Andy Black, uh, in association with Republic Records. Andy did the cover of this. We'll skip ahead. A lot of epic black and white stuff. Oh, some marching band drums. Turns out people with tattoos maybe are bad guys after all, eh? Yeah, we were, we were just we were already told about this <laughs> early on. <laughs> wow, this is why? Wait, why was this done? I don't know. I don't really get it. I guess he went solo. Andy Beersack. This guy's name is Beersack. What the fuck? Sounds so bad. Oh my god. So apologies to any uh, Black Veil Brides fans listening. Uh, don't know why you're here, but um, you know, <laughs> I don't apologize. You deserve whatever discomfort comes your way. Apparently. So this one's really brand new. It's from like a day ago. This is the Midnight Munchies Manifesto. Uh, this is some kind of metaverse shit. Guys, I think. Girls, let us I mean, keep the action. Keep I don't the action really get what it is. On the main stage. I see Dottie Mouse in line. There's like a, I see Face Palmer in line right next this? to him. I gotta say, <laughs> Isn't that we interesting? Got a coming up, up next from our super group. Give it. Is this like a Dot Second Life kind of thing? I think so. This is uploaded by Dot right. Matrix. Ladies uh, and gentlemen, we are Dot Matrix. How y'all doing today? A musical duo who performs songs in virtual reality. Come on, man. Various venues across yeah, VR chat. Work, I don't think it's... Hard, is we're it's, working hard it, on this one. So Palmer shared... Uh, VR chat is an online virtual world platform. And, uh, we asked... Yeah. Okay. So it's just, but it is like it's. I mean, oh, this fucking rules, man. It is. Yeah. It's future rock. It is very. Any final guesses? Green Day. When people share those videos that are like, this is what shopping in the metaverse is going to look like, and it's incidentally that video is like ten years old, also. But anyway. Green Day. Uh, well, this also like they shared videos like this, and they were like, this is what it's going to be like to go to a variety show in the future. Who would not be stoked? One guns. So weird. Oh yeah, those guitars. Oh, a guy with cool like Macklemore hair just walked up. There's also like a troop who kind of looks like a security guard, but he also looks like he's gonna go postal and shoot up the venue. I wonder if you can do that. Can you like kill people in this world? I don't know about VR chat. I don't think you can kill people in Second Life. I think you just fuck. So the the guys on stage are kind of like. Slightly bird like fox people. Yeah, they, they kind of look like evil Star Fox characters. Well, yeah. the, the troop just like scratched his ass, I think. And what is the back of this? Does it just say the dirt on the back of the troop? It says theory. And also, now they're performing, there's, there's music notes flying out. And there. snow, somehow. It's snowing. Is someone doing cocaine in this virtual venue? I think so. I mean, it's the troop show, is being is so uh, like whoever made the avatar a troop is so fucking annoying. Everyone else is just like politely watching the show. Of course. Oh, are they gonna start moshing? There's some sort of Sonic. Is this like, can, 
do I need like an Oculus to fully engage with this? Or I think you do because I this, think is this what it's like if you get an Oculus? I think those people on the right who are just like gray circles. I think those are people who haven't like made their avatar yet, but you can see their hands and their head. Like they're probably seeing it in first person and able to look around and look at the characters. So I actually would love to experience this. Yeah. Truly. I'm going to get a headset so I can. <laughs> it seems really cool. On the same. Experience the Midnight Munchies Theater. On the same kind of tip, but different. This is Nick, N I K, try number two. This is the second try of their cover. I don't know if this is VR or what, but it is like definitely some computer CGI shit. Uh, it's like zooming into a. I guess an island outside of a hut. It's. Yes, looks, once again, kind of looks like missed. David Bowie from the Labyrinth. But I guess it's his New song. Yeah. Whoa, coming in hot. It's sort of like if Jan Arden it's was, in, was in Labyrinth. 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 It's kind of the vibe. <laughs> if Jan Arden was the, the complicated. <laughs> and the description of this one, if I recall correctly, does not even explain this CGI thing. Nick Archer Everything in the audio file was arranged by me using the notes I tried arranging backings a few times only Everything's based on experiments I think they're trying to say that they Everything Okay, this is was done by arranging the notes This is in Second Life, actually, I found it So this is Second Life This is in Second Life? Yeah Which honestly looks dope But I think it's like I think Second Life is like One of the most dangerous places on the internet Oh, it's him for real! Oh, I like how he's kind of getting on like a TV in Second Life. Yeah, kind of like bouncy at this bar. That's tight. I like that his Jan Arden Goblin King has like a pet leopard. He's looking at him dancing. It is dancing. This is fucking awesome. This is so sick. But I think, oh, this is so cool. Okay, we can't watch the whole thing. It's too long because I, we have to watch a lot of this one. This is Tina D and Tilwin. Uh, I don't think you can tell right off the top what, what this is. I mean, you might see a spoily in the description, but uh, this is too... I'll steer, I'll steer clear. This is two white people uh, doing a cover of 21 Guns. Do you know what's Cool echo. Cool, uh, mm, cool mm-hmm. accent. Let's go. Does it takes your breath away? I'm really intrigued. Does no pay away? Cool, cool guitar sounds. Okay, great filming, also. Why are you being? Did you make this? <laughs> I, I feel like maybe like in my subconscious I did will this into existence because it's so good. Nice. It sounds really nice, eh? Hey? There's a clue there with the color scheme. There's a clue. Uh, There's a little clue. What's about to happen? What do you think is about to happen? <laughs> I'm nervous because I can only imagine one thing happening here. <laughs> yes! yes! <laughs> Let's go! Oh, yes! Oh my god! He's wearing like a Spin Doctor's knitted flappy hat with with <laughs> yeah. headphones over the flaps. It's so sick. And a Mickey Mouse shirt. Oh my god, yes. These people seem like they would somehow steal weed from me, even though I've never had weed on me before. <laughs> these are... Like, I, I, it is worth noting, these are not just white people. These are like the whitest people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yes, bro. I'm oh, doing that like. I'm doing that dance that Scarlett Johansson does in Marriage Story that people always gift when my hands are above my head. The white lady mama dance. Oh my God. 
Oh, this is so fucking good. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, as, as I was like, there's got to be something that's going to explain this. Well, they're from Slovenia. I like the name of the producer, arranger, and mixer. Matej Audioholic Srebrnik. Oh, it's rocking now. Rock reggae. Is that even allowed? Yeah, he's doing like some serious growling. Oh, that bass line was I fucking cooking also. I feel like this is a reggae version of the musical version. I think it is. <laughs> I think it says that. <laughs> oh, she's pretending to grow. Sorry, it's really hard to turn this one off. How could you? It's so good. I don't want to kill the high. I'm burning one right now. I feel like I am too. It just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah, that's it. They, they stole your weed and gave it back. <laughs> oh, yes. Whoa. I mean, here's the thing. It fucking rocks. It's so good. I'm not here to police reggae in Slovenia. That's true. It's probably a whole different thing over there. Totally. Maybe they... Yes, or- I can see they have an anarchy uh, poster in this recording studio. They, like, organically developed their own version of reggae without it being appropriation. Probably. Exactly. <laughs> can we say that? <laughs> I don't know. I think you can say whatever you want about Savannah. Oh, that <laughs> dub. <laughs> We need some air horns on this shit. Just Man, fairy on I need the, the fucking acetate. Of. Give me the acetate of this. <laughs> the dump plate. Oh my god. It's so good. Yes. All that percussion. Oh. Man, maybe we should skip the street punk phase and get dreadlocks. Yes. Let's do it. They're I'm cooking. Ready. Tina D and Tillman, everybody. Check them out. But while, yes, we're, in, while we're, doing some, we're doing some genre experimentation, I mean, imagine well, if somebody... the appropriation zone. Imagine if somebody took a kind of a pop song and made it metal. Uh, that's what that's the question that Points of Conception answered. Uh, in that's their really, You can't of, ask that question. It's kind of a... Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Some kind of auto-tune underneath, too. Or maybe he's just singing. No, I think there's definitely like a heavily auto tune. I can't even tell if this sounds like YouTube metal or what it sounds like. I do like that those. It's not even YouTube metal. It's just like I do like the, those big cabs don't have any heads on them, unless they're like on the floor <laughs> yeah. or something. I don't think so. No, yeah, they're just huge <laughs> mess of cabs with no heads. <laughs> I think like they should just if you try to upload a YouTube video with metal in the title, it shouldn't let you. Like I'm sure because I'm sure there are banned words on YouTube for titles of videos. Like, there's what do you no think way. some of them might be? Some of the banned words, if you were to guess, I don't know, man. Out loud, I couldn't tell on you. Mike. Couldn't tell you. Um, <laughs> you know what? You know what? What the fuck? We're in the second half of the show. No one's listening. Um, <laughs> I hate like, this, this one should, this so much. This shouldn't be allowed on the fucking internet, man. I was gonna, I was gonna agree with you, and I was gonna side with you, and then I found Green Day Twenty One Guns metal version, uh, and this one might make well, them all worthwhile. Remember we found that frog metal? You this one, those the, the Italian. That's frog true. Runners. That one was good. This is Lars Bjornen. Uh, <laughs> that's not real. And look how he's like on a farm, and he's not fucking around, Lars Bjornen. I mean, he's already just like chugging along, and he's just like a scrawny little nerd in a field. Just a nerd in a field. That okay, was, see, uh, wow. He starts doing some like sweet picking and stuff. I mean, I think he just saved metal. I think that's it. Lars, this is like Lars. literally like Bill and Ted metal that he's playing. Yeah, yeah, totally. Wow, Lars, Lars Brilliant is Wild Stallions. 
Uh, also, the this is, hey guys, how are you? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Today is a good day because we just passed 300 subscribers, which I think is amazing. I'm so glad that you guys like it. I'm thinking about maybe making a gear video. I think it's smart to try new things in my videos as well. Let me know what you think, folks. Thanks again. I'll see you later. Bye. He's so cute. And his friends also, are... Also, he's over a thousand subscribers His now, friends so like, are um, screwed. Phillips had screws. Mars Bjornin. He's a fucking badass. And then look at this. Yes, bro. Oh. It's literally I was impossible. Lost my bro did. It's bro actually... <laughs> Me too. I wish I lived on the farm with him. Oh, uh, just to be farm yours. <laughs> yours <laughs> uh, I can never not be so impressed by a sick guitar solo. I'm sorry. What am I supposed to say? I mean, it's I'm you're a just a being. you're just a person, man. You're just, just a person making a podcast. You so, live and breathe like the rest of us. Maybe I'm going to save this one for later. That that was we'll, we'll do a couple. Uh, well, maybe one or two more genre revisits later on. But okay, let's move on to. Um, <clears throat> Where am I here? 21 Guns cover English 2. Uh, a lot of, like, second takes being put on here, I think. <laughs> but I love this one. These guys are all wearing, like, I think, delivery, food delivery jackets. Yeah. The explosions in the sky intro makes them all epic. This is uploaded by Chanatip Kamhang. There's no and They're all info. wearing different, it looks like, delivery. Because they all kind of no look like the Skip the Dishes thing. But I also love the vocals people. being recorded, like, just into the phone and then adding auto-tune. It's <laughs> it sounds so crazy. There's so much, like, digital artifacting. But the music video is sick. Hey, you guys, this is a, like, a flawless music video. They've got a nice gimbal, it looks like. Like, real yeah. smooth movements here. This is fucking awesome. It's like, the, I think the audio recording wasn't probably the quality that they wanted, so they just, like, worked on it in post forever. To yeah. the point where I feel like this could be, like, a new trend of sound, to, like, use a raw iPhone recording and then just edit the shit out of it. Ooh, just, yeah, totally. The jackets are all so fresh. Like, this dude's just, yeah. like, bright orange. Shoppy food. Shopping food on it has like some, uh, like uh, I would, I would, I, three I M strips. Yeah, yeah. You could, I could definitely see someone cooler than you, both you of could, us wearing you could this. Wear it. I don't think I could wear. I, it. I could like wear it at home, but I don't think I would have the guts to wear it outside. But this guy has a sick mustache too. Yeah, there you go. I think you're ready. When you're so it just keeps switching guys and switching. They all have this guy's shirt says "Grab." By the way, just for yeah. Everyone. I mean, not watching. They, is there ever a time when they all sing together? It looks like maybe. Oh, there's a photo no, of them like together. There's a. Oh, it's so cute. I love these guys, man. That's yeah, so these are my sick. guys. That's so tight. All right, up next, uh, this one is uploaded by Five Russ with three S's. And this one really plays into kind of the war vibe of the song. Now, um, will it matter that I haven't seen Russ's that's, one, uh, one that's three? That's good. And also three. when it was only two S's uh, at the end of the name. So the, right. as you can see with the image that accompanies this, it's really leaning into the war Ooh. theme. Um, it says yeah. 21 gallons power. And this is written in like a... I think Danzig font, maybe. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> is this, there's like a... I mean, I, it's almost impossible to describe this. It is so... There's so many <laughs> logos and stuff on here, and it says Green Day. Do you know and it says Consortium Helling Timber Burhead, and it says 21 Guns Power may be at the end of a gun, but sometimes it's also at the end of the shadow or the image of a gun. Um, so that's already a lot to chew on. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> <laughs> there's, some, there's some deep thoughts to be sharing in this already incredibly compelling but uh, baffling image. Yeah, like, how do you even make this? Is this is one of those things that where we see sometimes where I like don't know how you would make this on purpose? I know. Like it looks like so. so like it's, it's, it's like impossible to even describe what it looks like. It, it has no. It has like no a precursor like in media. Yeah. There's, there's nothing that this looks like other than itself. So there's like a precursor to the, like, like this is like a Gulf War photo. Like it looks good from the 90s. 
And then which Green Day logo is that? Is that like Minority Era Green Day? It's like kind of a generic. I think are the maybe that is on the the trilogy. Okay, but it looks like a back patch that's been photoshopped around and sort of put over top of the Gulf War photo. And then you have two logos, one of which I think is like the medical, like um, medicine logo, right? The Oh, we sing is the karaoke song. app he must be using. That must be oh, Okay, we sing is the watermark. But that's and then on top of a his, medical. <laughs> his, yeah, 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 the little medical winged uh, snake logo. And then you've got... I think that medical logo this, is what he's superimposed on top of as well, because it has the same text in the ring. Right, okay. But it, yeah, it looks much more, like, militaristic in his phone. He spammed the and comments with his his own vibey take. Power may be at the end of the gun, but sometimes it's also at the end of... The shadow. The shadow, or the, or the image, image of, of a gun. I mean, let's so really deep. think... And again, yeah, right, yeah, all in the Danzig font. It's so sick. It's so fucking sick. Five rusts. So Five sick. Russ, man. He co- he's also covered. A few oh to my get God, there, he's covered got- Engelbert Humperdinck. He's covered the Darkness. He's covered Diamond King Diamond. He's doing it all. Five Russ is killing it on here. But Five Russ. It's not. There's not very much. Oh, so actually, some of the other war theme songs have similar uh, statements. But yeah, shout out to Five Russ. Now. I wasn't sure. No, if just I, for the record, uh, that is, uh, in fact, you know, and I knew this. Um, in fact, not an original five for us quote, but a very famous quote from Jean Genet, uh, who you and I both know as a French novelist, playwright, poet, essayist, and political activist. Well, I was testing the uh, listeners, actually. So. Yeah. Uh, so, so a, 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 a very famous. That's um, so funny how. For, you know, French quote. If you're like in school and someone says like, "Hey, listen to this quote from fucking Jean 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 Jean," and you're like, "Oh, that's so deep," and then when it's put in this context, you're like, "Oh, this is just some <laughs> shit some guy made up for his karaoke thing." Yeah. Like, this looks exactly like you're that. like, "Damn, that guy had like kind of a wild thought," but like, <laughs> sure, man, whatever, <laughs> whatever you say, karaoke guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, being being sketchy. <laughs> Um, a lot of a lot of like images of that quote over like mystic landscapes and stuff. <laughs> if you Google image search, it's pretty sick. Speaking of being sketchy uh, with politics, I wasn't sure if I should play this one or not due to the times nowadays. But I'm going to play it. But this is an interesting thing about uh, you know last Green May we talked about satire and about ideas and how they when you're a global band how your ideas can change and move around. Well, this is. Uh, the Institute of Military Conductors in Russia. So this is uh, the Russian mm, military so uh, covering. So this is, and this, this is you song. supporting. I just want to make uh, this clear. You well, picked this song, <laughs> and I'm. I mean, I'm turning away. Let's just. We don't have to. We can separate the art from the artist. I think. But <laughs> That's uh, true. this is the Russian military. Yeah, we know. We know most people. I mean, the Russian military is mostly conscripts. Yeah. A lot of coughing, though. Kind of disrespect. Or just edit the video. I mean, before you upload <laughs> yeah. it. Edit. Just edit the front. We didn't need all that coughing. <laughs> or you don't need to Start filming later. Yeah. <laughs> it's very Come obvious on. you were too early. It's so nice, though. <laughs> Listening to a Russian military band. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, maybe we don't want to influence people too much, but I mean, they. Oh, yeah. Oh, those, those, I will say this. Um, it's quite beautiful. It's quite beautiful. Maybe <laughs> they would, if they would put down their guns and pick up their clarinets. And maybe take a fucking lozenge before you play or just edit out the. Fr- I mean, have some respect for the, for the craft, viewer, really. For the um, viewer. Uh, okay, now there's two that kind of seem like they're from uh, Richard Linklater's Waking Life, I think, as I would mm. describe these ones. This is 21 Guns cover Green Day. This one in particular. Oh, what? Incredibly out of tune guitar. Full it's Linklater. I'm to start really blowing my high school mind right now. I'm so angry that it, that he's so good in First Reform because I don't like him. This is Fred Fan is the name of this person. Who doesn't like Ethan Hawke? Oh, and this was uploaded... Uh, just about a week ago, April 27th, 2022. Wow. This really is the waking life filter. <laughs> it's like, so, how do you even do Link this? Linklater took so long to make that movie, and I don't. I bet this person did not take as long. 
We should have been making some sort of boyhood style thing all this time. Or I guess I mean that is what we. What is the part if not? Really, we deserve the title boyhood. I think. I mean, boy, yeah, we we played prolonged you know, boyhood. boyhood. Blink one eighty two. We have Blink one eighty two. That's true. I mean, yeah, it's more of a for the Richard Linklater vibes for us, but um, you know, yeah. I, I respect <laughs> the out of tune guitar as well and yeah. the laptop. Just imagine if that was like beautifully animated in the style of Waking <laughs> yeah. Life. That's this what, one's that's what we were looking at that whole time. <laughs> It's less waking life, but still incredible filter. This is Jose and Maria uh, playing violin. Oh, in his in yeah. This is like a sort of high. I don't know what you would call that. I don't. Yeah, I don't know what this one's really going for stylistically in terms of uh, film, in terms of cinema. But mm-hmm. wait, what the fuck? This one was also uploaded, I think, on the same day as that last one, like a really? week ago. <laughs> what the hell? You know what it looks like? This is also just because I rewatched it last night. This has like something of a like, could have been like a scene in Manhunter where you're like, Michael Mann is crazy for this color scheme. <laughs> but he's killing it. I love this guy. Yeah. Incredible apartment, right? apartment. Everyone should have so much clutter in their house. I love it. Clutter is so sick. You just love it because the clutter is all Christ. Well, yeah. I mean, if you got some Christ clutter in your house, nothing better. Well, if you're going to clutter your house already, like, why not yeah, just clutter with Christ? Purposes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this All is right. gorgeous. Yeah, here's a trombone doing it. Um, hey, guys. Welcome back to trombone, back to trombone Tuesdays. And trombone today, Tuesdays. And this one seems to be kind of easy, actually. Um, I love trombone We're going to be covering Tuesdays. 21 Guns by Green Day. He kind of laughed one, himself like out. It's relatively easy. slow-paced What song, the fuck so. is... Okay, wait. Maybe there's some kind of cover challenge, because this one is also from April 26, 2022. The last one was from April 27th, and then the one before that was 27 or 28. Like, oh, that's weird. That's it's really so fucking. So are we being link later? Are air. we being link later right now? Um, yeah. Hopefully, you guys are ready for this. Um, interesting <laughs> decor in this room. Tracks. There's like. And I hope you enjoy the video. A, a borderline oh. terrifying zoo picture above the bed, and then like a race car and a single bowling pin. <laughs> it's like <laughs> so interesting. Why did everybody cover Twenty One Guns last week? Did John Gallagher? Junior, tell them about this. I think that's it. These are all friends of JG. JGJ. JGJ. Okay, the tension's coming here. <laughs> He's playing along to someone else's trombone cover? Is he? Because yeah, I feel like you can hear when he's out of tune. I think that's just his like his mouth control is kind of janky, so he's he's going in and out. It's warbly. He's like this is like the pavement of trombonists. <laughs> Quite terrible. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Man, this is awesome. The last week of April is a magical time for Green Day fans. They all go on, of all <laughs> ages, all. of all stylistic choices, they all cover. <laughs> oh, this is so good. <laughs> also, it's sev- how is it seven minutes long? You know. I guess there was like oh, a he bit talks of an at the end? And I think for next week, we'll be jumping to, to another childhood favorite about? of mine that is Behind Those Hazel Eyes by Kelly Clarkson. So make sure we... But he's talking about what he's going to cover next week. He just it kind of—it's oh, like a okay. vlog mixed with Trombone the cover. Juices. I love it. I respect it. Yeah, it's sick as hell. That was great. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. I love. I just love that all of these last three were uploaded last week. Like, I hope that you know, if we keep doing Green May every year, maybe the last week of April is when people keep uploading their uh, single instrument, highly stylistic covers. But. Yeah, absolutely. The, the and that was great. Like, it was just, it was, vi- like, I, I feel like I would almost disparage that one, but I want to make it clear, it rocked, and I loved it. Well, I don't know about that, but um, <laughs> <laughs> what is the greatest instrument of all is, of course, uh, the gun. But other than, if, if you don't have a gun, you can use your voice, which is what the ISU. Mm, the gun of the, yeah. <laughs> clef the, where real violence happens. The clef, oh, the clef hangers. A cappella group singing 21 guns. This yes. song is just made for a big, a big group. Also in hey? a church. Yeah. I don't know what's going on here. Here we go. 
Whoa, loud sniffing. People need to get their shit together. When you hit record... One, two, three... This is so vibey. <laughs> oh, with the rest oh, of the it's the audience off, coughing. It's gonna be fucking sick. It's, it's the audience fun. coughing. Get your shit together. Sometimes you gotta cough. I'm not sick. Don't disrespect the clef the, the clef hangers. <laughs> the cough hangers more like. <laughs> I think the person filming is sniffling, maybe. <laughs> Someone's doing cocaine in here? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's all I can hear, and this is so beautiful. <laughs> are, they, are they crying? <laughs> On the sniffles, <laughs> it's like they're crying from it. All I can hear is the sniffles. <laughs> What's up with that? That's it, really? <laughs> no, it was someone else at the beginning. There was like one you, sniffle. I thought that and you was reacted surreal. so much to it that I just spent the last two minutes sniffling. Oh my god, I was like dying. <laughs> I thought this was a yeah. real thing. No, oh, there was like fuck. one cough and one sniffle. And then <laughs> I, I started sniffling and I thought you knew that I was doing it. And I then did. I realized that you didn't realize it was me. And then and oh then I started to cry god. laughing because I was like, how do you not realize <laughs> I, it's me? I like I was thought, sniffing for I like thought, 10 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I thought that someone, honestly, I thought they were singing so quiet that the gain had to be really loud. And then that's <laughs> <laughs> Because when you were like, no one is commenting on the sniffling. It's all I can hear. Oh my god! Here's a virtual choir, Broadway shots. Uh, it's like a billion fucking people on this. Oh wow. my god! I a lot can't of shots. Be- Did you just sniffle again? Yeah. Now it's <laughs> now it's just a habit. <laughs> Are you doing coke over there? Now I'm thinking about breathing a lot, which is really. <laughs> Honestly, I don't, I'm not into these slow intros of these. Like, let me get maximum with it. Like, oh. Oh, yeah. Stinky. Oh. <laughs> Are they sniffling? <laughs> I mean, this is like a well-organized group yeah. sing. I will say that. There's no yeah. sniff. I liked the uh, I liked the parody better earlier. Where <laughs> Yeah, the verity was good. This one's a bit more punk. This is called the Rock and <gasps> Rock and Mob say a Rock and Mob Samara number one. We all know Love that, a rock about and that. Mob. Um, yeah, yeah, this. Oh, I mean, there's all. Is this like where they just tell everyone to show up and let's fucking rock out and play the? This same. looks like when it was like all the Italians played the Foo Fighters. Yeah, that was like that set a really bad precedent in the culture. People started just doing that shit all the time. I'll be honest, this is fucking great. <laughs> so, like, there are, I don't know, what would you say, 500 people? 3 million people? Yeah. Okay, I just wonder if it's gonna fall apart. Yeah, you see how it's. 
Oh, this is, uh, I think this is also in Russia. Oh. So, sounds like you love, uh, you support, you side with Russia. Kind of interesting. Yeah, no, that's no, well, never it's, mind. It's in France. It's, cl- it's, it's in France. I'm wrong. Well, now I don't like it. Now I'm even more embarrassed. <laughs> Why would they say that... Oh, I see. Never I mind. Like, I like the people who are, like, really doing, like, stage moves. <laughs> yeah, like, jumping around. Like, there's a couple of guitar players, like, really selling it. I guess the first rock and mob was in Moscow. And this is in Tamara, oh, located yeah. 1,000 kilometers away. I don't know why they're trying to make it about Russia. It's still got pro-Russia vibes. Yeah. I mean, I know I was mocking someone earlier uh, for using dated internet parlance, but, like, you know it smells crazy out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, big time. Like, you can kind of smell it through the computer. Yeah, I mean, if you were to sniff really hard right now, you'd probably smell it. <laughs> I, I wonder what it sounds like there. Look at them go. I mean, can you, like, could you, like, if I lived in Samara, could I, like, like, file, Rock a, file, a, that like file a complaint with the city? Or For sure, yeah. Get some there's definitely like issued. still there's a there's a lawsuit that has been winding its way through. There's like borderline Samara for there's borderline five years. trucker convoy vibes with these rock things. Oh, I would not feel safe going out to get groceries <coughs> or walk my dog with yeah. these rock exactly rockers about. Okay, I think we're gonna watch a bunch of little kids now. Oh, this so one. Like, okay, this one is incredible. This one is ten minutes long. I don't know if we'll watch the whole thing. I mean, it's feeling like a kind of ridiculous night right now. I feel I'm a little scared of the of the power yeah. that is, this song possesses over us. This yeah. is Bartos Bijak. Uh, this is from 2010. Um, okay, someone's actually broken down the time code of the video, which is amazing. But yeah, it's like it starts off with which, what I love is you never see the teen performing at his computer from this angle. You know, kind of yeah, a side shot. Yeah, this is like shot. a new angle. It's kind of like, yeah. honestly, like some World's Fair shit. If, and if no one's seen that movie, if you haven't seen that movie yet, a uh, friend of the show, Mila Matviva, is the producer. And that's not why I love it. I mean, it's a truly incredible movie. We're all going to the World's Fair. Check it out. Streaming or possibly at a theater near you. Um, but it kind of gives me that vibe of just like some behind the scenes life online. But then like, the, f- yeah. the friend is like the trying out the camera. He switches to his like heavy channel. So sick. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> friends on the bed now. Is it, I think the modem is like in the middle of the floor, but beside the bed, where it's gonna instantly get crushed. On some like real soft looking red carpet. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's a like, loft. This is, yeah. Wearing, the, this is the awesome electric guitarist thing. is wearing a shirt that says no future. Another, another classic example of uh, maybe starting filming a little early. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Tuning a classical uh, nylon string acoustic guitar. The nylon string with the like heavily processed Epiphone SG is a great combination. <laughs> he just did a thumbs up to the camera while I said that. <laughs> There's nothing better also than trying to tune an uh, acoustic guitar and then someone just starts, like, shredding. But what's he tuning to, like... Is he tuning by ear? Is he looking at a tuner? Oh, maybe he has a tuner. Well, I think he's playing a little bit of 21 Guns there. There's a, there's a hint of 21 <laughs> <laughs> this is so insane. <laughs> no, what's, what's this kid play? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, 
When kids learn how to shred like that, they always like. I'm gonna see if I can figure out the time code. <laughs> creeping. I think we're in the creeping dad Metallica section. I don't know if they ever play 21 Guns. <laughs> this is a 10 minute video. <laughs> so it says at the library. Um, what? Maybe that's what they call I'm going to paste you the. Paste, this is the description. I don't, I don't know what any of this says. <laughs> I think they're going to play Holiday at some point. Wait. What the fuck? Should I skip ahead? I mean. Uh, yeah, okay. Fred and Holiday Anarchy. I don't think they ever play 21 Guns. The description the description of the video though is 21, 21 Guns, guns <laughs> cover. <laughs> Maybe they forget what holidays. Maybe we should let's okay. Well let's just see a few little I'd like to check in with the boy. Oh, he leaves. <laughs> this is so good. Oh my god. What a gift. Oh, 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 here we go. Oh, oh. oh they nailed the intro. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, it's, laughs> his guitar wasn't on. You gonna start it again? <laughs> yeah, he's stopping. Oh, he's getting him the tempo. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. This is my favorite. Let's just hear how they rock with it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> it really I feel like I'm returning home when I watch shit like this. I just feel like I'm being <laughs> yeah. greeted with a warm hug. Thank you so much to these boys. That's uh Bartosz Yeah, that's just parts of our brain just shutting down. That's... <laughs> All right, this is uh 21 Guns cover by Seven Stars featuring C. Palel, Battle of the Bands, 2022. Oh, oh wow. Maybe this is from last Was week. Was this also from the end of April? Oh, I really hope so. Oh, boy, do I ever hope so. Yep, <laughs> April 14th. This is the no, Shalom oh English God. Academy, Palel. Okay, so everyone here is much shorter than I expected because they are children. They're so little. And there's so many of them. And it's they had to go like mega widescreen to fit all these tiny kids in here. Yeah. yeah, that's the other thing is it's incredibly widescreen like video. It's so and they're playing like in front of in front of the school, I think. No sniffling, no bullshit at the start. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is in uh, India. This is fucking awesome. It's so good. It, just, it looks it looks fake. I know. Like it's just so charming. It looks like oh, I also, a Wes Anderson I movie. I absolutely love how they didn't kick in any distortion. It's just the piano started no. playing a little bit more. It's classy. But the, it feels like this is like something where you're like, oh, the entire soundtrack is just like a children's band covering Green Day and unexpected and beautiful symmetrical. <laughs> yeah, locations. yeah. That's the thing. Like you know, you know, like respect to like the the eight-year-old drummers who are, like, incredible and friends with Dave Grohl or whatever, but I want a little kid drummer to just, like, kind of suck in a good way. Like, this like this yeah, is, like, totally. this is like Langley School's music project. Let's go back to that and not make everything into, like, a Batman soundtrack or whatever. <clears throat> yeah, you know, great. Like, I, that's, that's an official pop position, yeah, not like you're pro-Russia. Well, I mean, you also liked Probably. something Russian, or may, uh, maybe. I don't remember. <laughs> Russia adjacent. Yeah. Uh, here's 21 Guns cover. Um, this is also some little kids. <laughs> there's a, no. I think there's a, a mo- oh, this one is all fucked up. I think sometimes it's like such an old video. I think there's a mom that has to help them set up. 
and they're in the backyard. Yeah, the mom is, is putting the, the oh the mom's this is she's going to play. This is uploaded by Power Delay One. This is playing at Ian's house, August fourteenth, twenty ten. Oh, you okay? <laughs> oh wait, I think I need to. I think I do need to play something else uh, after this. Oh, that's not a mom, actually, I don't think. She's just so much taller than the boys that I just... She was just, like, three feet taller than every boy. (laughs) (laughs) We're like, is the mom going to play guitar with the children? You're like, oh, no, they're all children. Yeah, but that boy with the fedora is, like... The boy with the fedora is... The boy with, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, the boy with the fedora is Ian. Uh, this is live at Ian's house. Um, oh, she's killing it with the intro. <laughs> I like when the bass player just... Yes. I mean, this is just a totally different song, and it's arguably a better song. Yeah, I'm enjoying this much. This is like some K Records shit right here. Yeah, this is this is real Josiah stuff. Add Calvin Johnson be like, I'm looking at the moon. <laughs> I feel alive. <laughs> like that's my shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted really, to shit. once again like the sniffles hearing that on my side, I was like, oh yeah, like I've it's not for me, but I, I, I know people who love this stuff. <laughs> There we go. Yeah, that's when it switches. He starts being like, pow, kapow. He starts doing like spoken word. So, I mean, (laughs) I don't know if this is about that or not. I kind of think I like it, but I don't know if Ian intended to be playing the song. All I know is that Power Delay 1 channel, one of the only other videos on it is called Ian's Statement, and it's 30 seconds long. Let's find out what Ian has to say. Hey, what's up? Me, Ian from Power Delay. Um, saw some of you guys posted some things how we made our song. It's a bit, you know, tricky, I guess, for, you know, some dudes can't make up any lyrics. We didn't. You know, we just play. We can't find a singer. We're going to save money to get some microphones, see if we can sing. So, rock hard. See you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, Ian, what was that statement? <laughs> what did you just say? Hey, what's up? Me, Ian from Power Delay. Um, saw some of you guys posted some things how we made our song. It's a bit, you know, tricky, I guess, for, you know, some dudes can't make up any lyrics. We did You know, we just play. We can't find a singer. We're going to save money to get some microphones. See if we can sing. So, rock hard. See you guys. Oh, my God. Ian, Ian is so cool. Holy shit. Ian, Ian is literally, like, he's butters. Like, Ian was literally just butters. Just like, well, we're going to get some microphones. And then what are you going to say? There's, like, Jack McBriar and butters. Like, oh. just, oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. Uh, he did throw the horns. He did throw the horns. Did, the the video just sort of caught him casually slapping the bass, ready to make a statement. I knew he. I knew that it was called Ian's oh. statement. He was going to make a statement. I knew it was going to be almost apologetic in nature, but I didn't expect quite that. That it's hard to. Yeah, a statement a, is sort of an apology. I, that 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 was, was, I was like, what? Is, oh no, <laughs> Ian, what have you done? <laughs> They just don't have a singer yet. Yeah, well, they're going to pay for microphones, so rock on. Uh, <laughs> this band is called Limit, all caps, and then less in lower caps. It's kind of an interesting stylistic choice. Um, and it looks like this gal is in prison. So, I am going to be sniffling now. Just <laughs> <laughs> This is me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, my she's God. She's been in prison for a long time. What's worth I don't think any of these people went to prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of like a jaunty tempo for. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's very great big C. Oh, this is her last day. Oh, that's good. She wrote I Love You on, on the prison wall, too. Oh. Let's go. So like that guy's like 30, the drummer. Yeah. <laughs> they all look really haunted. <laughs> this is Video Team Leo Ben, 21 Guns. Uh, that's all I really know. 
Okay. So there's no to the end of the road. context here. Oh, this kid rules, though. <laughs> you know, it's like way oh, too much swag. <laughs> like, this feels really quite Christian, except that Eames has, like, too much sexual energy for this to be Christian. <laughs> the kid rocks. It's so, like, swaggy. Where's when this you at the Let's go. Yes, bro. Yeah, and you lost This has been uploaded by Video road. Team Leobin, which is Atlas Gymnasium Lubin's video crew. <laughs> when your mind breaks the spirit of your soul. I love that kid. Your face. So there's a little story with jail, and I don't know, there's that guy, he's just belting it out. Um, They're Austrian. <clears throat> that guy kind of had similar energy to this next one, which is uh, <laughs> a band in you know, suits playing their, I think, junior high grad, uh, <laughs> or maybe high school. The, the singer, like, there was a video that I was going to play that I didn't where they apologized for not knowing their stage presence yet. This singer knows his fucking <laughs> stage presence. I'm going to tell you that right now. Do you know what's worth fighting for? So yeah, good, good, like, sort of microphone engagement. For. Yeah, just, just wait, though. Uh, so this is uploaded by J. Rin Films, 2014. Oh, new angle. Second, so second so cam. Okay. Someone's got the GoPro. Someone's got the knockoff GoPro there. That's the thing. What's weird to me, I thought, the, is it for, are they performing for parents or students? It's hard to tell because there's, there's a little toe in the foreground who looks young, but otherwise everyone looks older? I don't know. Let's see where oh, the mic's off the stand. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, out. baby. They're in Finland. Band. He's got one arm behind his back. Oh, yeah, that's... He starts... I'm just going to let you know right now, he basically starts doing, like, full-on crowd work, uh, verse two. <laughs> so he's... See, like he oh, goes yeah, there is. He like leaves the yeah. Why is he doing that? What are you doing? Do you think he started walking and then halfway was like, what am I doing? What am I? But I wanted to like I want to know how deep does he go? The bass player's gonna start hanging it. from the rafters. Yeah. Um, he's just gone. He's out of the shot. He's just gone. Jerin Jer films. He didn't plan for this, did you? He doesn't even come back. Oh, there he's back. Oh, there. So that's, that was like a high school graduation, kind of cool. Um, Love it. Here's the sax, just a standalone sax. Dan the sax player here in his room. Yes. Maybe it's he not his like, room. He uh, has like What's four. his name? I don't know. Uh, fucking Freaks and Geeks. Oh, yeah, Sam. <laughs> yeah, he looks like Sam. Like, this is like a 16-year-old boy playing in this fucking smooth Kenny G shit right here. It also really does kind of work in this it smooth really, jazz context. I mean, this song is like pretty lame in like a sick way. <laughs> this is like a Green Day song to take home to mom and dad. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So this is Dan the Saxman, and then there's also some sax at Beatstock 2013. Okay. This video is so chaotic. There's like so much going on already. Like I already feel like I'm, I'm freaking out. There's like seven amps. And balloons. So um, before we begin, I just have to say that we have a very talented bandmate at the piano right now, Karen Lung. Yeah, there's, there's just the stage is like really well festooned. The solo that you're gonna be hearing, so be excited. Yeah, the pianist has a saxophone solo in this, but I don't know that. It's like a nice. I wish I could see though. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is my shit though, for sure. Yeah. It sounds really good. <laughs> yes, hitting that open E string. Sounds tight. <laughs> I don't remember where the sax solo is. But see, the, well, the other singer girl left the stage. I think maybe a sax is. A... Oh, I think it's coming. But didn't she say the pianist was gonna do it? Yeah, I, she was making eye contact with the pianist. That's why I thought it was gonna happen. How old are the people in this video? It's hard to tell, right? They seem like they could be like our age, honestly. I feel like when you meet someone who's our age, you like has their shit together, they look like this. <laughs> oh, but here I we go. Also, like, here we go. Here we go. I also feel like it's possible they're 14. I know. Wait, someone's playing piano. Did they switch? There was a loud piano noise. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot happening in this video, man. <laughs> Yes, that was worth it. Yes. Killing it. There's not a lot of sax solos in uh, K Records type stuff, so I'm just, I love that. Innovating. Innovating the form. Yes. And then she goes, you know, you go to, whenever there's a lull, you just go back to the explosions in the sky part, and it's great. So just a couple left on this beautiful journey we've been on. Uh, what a journey, my God. I, I had to include this one because it's called Church Rocks, uh, and I don't mm-hmm. really know what it is. It says Concert Church Rocks. Um, this is the only SoundCloud that we're playing this episode. Beautiful organ at the start. Mm-hmm. Does this guy do you think in church rocks? Oh yeah. I mean I was already thinking that. More sax? Sax and organ, that's a nice combo. That's beautiful actually. But like the it's got me thinking church rocks. The art on the soundcloud looks like it's like coffee news, like 1997 kind of design. Corel draw some Corel draw shit. Yeah, totally. Let's hear what happens. Let's hear when they really take it to church. Uh, there's too much drama in this song. Oh, I mean, this is incredible. Sounds like the go Uh-oh. team. Oh, does church rock? Uh, yeah, I've been trying to tell you, and you're going to find out the hard way when it's too late. Uh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> forgiveness. You told me it was all about forgiveness. It's always time for the altar call, actually. Uh, but first, this one is so cool. This is There's really a lot of Europeans seem to love this song. Hey, th- and this is a Danish guitar performance from Soren Madsen. Um, Ooh, okay. This is a more promising... Uh, Nylon string acoustic <laughs> yeah, guitar situation that we previously so. saw. <laughs> it's true. Uh, yeah, 2014. And we're also recorded in a church. Oh, I mean, this is just fucking sick as hell. It sounds like the start of a Metallica record. It really does. You know what? I'm vetoing the final two because this one is too perfect. That's the thing, like, everyone has a nylon guitar by their family computer in the early 2000s, <laughs> yeah, but, up, yeah. but no one's respecting it, like, uh, our boy Soren here. No. He's I, literally yeah, Soren. Nylon, we had, this was the guitar we had in my house, and I just tried to play power chords on it. <laughs> shots i don't think it's not overdub he's like this is all one guitar no, but two shots all, all happening oh sorry you're my dog yes 
Okay, well, I gotta say, I loved 21 Guns going into it. I love talking to JGJ. But this has been one of the most fun episodes I've had in a, in a long time. I mean, what a journey. We had the sniffles, yeah. we had the giggles. Yeah. <laughs> we had it all. Yeah, I, 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 haven't, I haven't cried uh, doing the pod in a minute, so I give that uh, 21 sniffles out of 21 guns. <laughs> Best pod of the century. <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> Kicking off Green May in style. I cannot believe he's here. Welcome to the show, who I want to introduce as Newsroom Jim, but it's actually John Gallagher Jr. What's up? Hey, man. How you doing? <laughs> Thanks so much for having me here. Thank you so much for coming on. I mean, I'm going to try not to just talk to you about the newsroom the whole time. but You, told, um, you can. I'll follow your lead. <laughs> Wherever you lead us, I'll go. I mean... Do people talk to you about the? What are you most known for? Because I feel like you're obviously you're here to talk about American Idiot uh, with yeah. me. But what like is you must be getting stopped in the street for people to talk to you about like an epic uh, newsroom moment. Not a lot of street stoppage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there was some street stoppage when the newsroom was on. Uh, w- you know when that was on TV every Sunday night. I feel like that was the height of you know kind of being recognized or or stopped on the on the street or on the subway because I, I live in New York and I'm often out and about. Right. Um, as most New Yorkers are. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say the thing I'm most known for is probably the newsroom, just because it had the highest profile. It was Aaron Sorkin and it was HBO and. Um, it, you know, I, I, they don't get, it, it's, it wasn't like a massive viewership because cable, it was kind of pre-streaming too. It's like it, it was back when you really had to, uh, you had to watch it or DVR it, you know, there was no HBO go or HBO max yet. I think that would like come out a few years later. Mm-hmm. Um, but even so that was a moment. Yeah. That, was, I think that's the thing. What I found, what I was most obsessed with, with that show was like, kind of imagining because it was about real news things that had happened. I was kind of imagining how all of your characters would have dealt with like modern things. Like it's no, just absolutely. such a peculiar, uh, yeah, it was done in this way. It was kind of hindsight is 2020 where we looked back at the, you know, looked back at big news events and were able to kind of, you know, crystallize them and, and comment, comment on them perfectly. It's so good. So good. But you're here to talk to me about pop punk. And I was like, yeah. I was doing some Googling today and I didn't realize that you actually have like a pop punk past until I was just checking out your old band. Right. Yes. Yeah. So tell us yeah. about that. Annie's autograph, right? Yes. Well, when I was in high school, when I was a teenager uh, in Wilmington, Delaware, in the in the kind of angst ridden suburbs um, of, of Delaware, um, I uh, yeah, I played in a pop punk band called Annie's Autograph in uh um, I only played a handful of shows with them. I want to say it was the summer of 2002, maybe. But it was, I mean, I still think of it uh, so fondly and look back on it with, the, with, with uh, you know, rose-colored glasses because it was so much fun. It was some of the most fun that I'd ever had playing music. I, um, I mean, the, the Annie's Autograph site, I don't know if you know this, is still live. Oh, um, no way. And, like, it reminds me of, like, my... That's kind of the per- the exact era that I was in bands playing shows too. So seeing a site that has like a guest book or like oh, you yeah. know like the hand drawn uh, buttons Absolutely. and everything, oh, it takes me back. It feels so good. The- Give a special shout out because we we lost him a few years back, but uh, the lead singer songwriter of that band was named Daryl Devlin, and he was so talented. Uh, he's no longer with us, but um, oh, he was sweet. a great. Oh, that's okay. Uh, you know, thank you, thank you kindly. Yeah. Um, but uh, he was amazing, so talented. One of those. One of those guys that you you know you meet when you're a teenager and and you just think like oh, this guy's an absolute superstar like amazing guitar player lyricist uh, singer played with so much passion and so much emotion and I really you know I I I kind of credit him and that band with getting me a little bit more into the scene I think I had been on the fringes a little bit more before before then it had always been you know. I grew up in a very folk music oriented family. Like we listened to a lot of roots music and, and kind of like, you know, sixties rock and roll and seventies and stuff. And it took me a minute to come around to more underground stuff. And then, you know, that kind of blew my world open when I started playing with that band he started giving me records. And then that was obvious, obviously in the early two thousands, that was the, you know, the era of drive through and, you know, fat records and stuff and all this stuff that I started listening to and Amazing. following when I was a teenager. 
Oh, that's so cool. Well, yeah, like I guess so. I have a few questions because this once yeah. I once I find a GeoCity site with a guest book and everything, like I want to stay <laughs> in that zone for a while. Yeah, I just yeah. want to live there for a minute. It's um, your wheelhouse. <laughs> it is. So first of all, like what kind of music? What was the influences of Annie's autograph? And for those listening, uh, you can find the music online, and I can even link some of it. Um, it's sick though, but it's so raw. Like I'm just curious. Oh, it's rad. What were the yeah. uh, What were the influences going into? Well, it? I remember. I remember Daryl listening to a lot of American Nightmare. You know, like I remember him cool. citing. He he was way into them. Sick. And uh, and then at the time, I was. We were all really big into Brand New. You know, okay. that was like, they were the guys that we just thought they were so cool. They were still putting out kind of, they were on a small indie label and they would come through the Philly, Pennsylvania, Delaware area and play kind of DIY venues and people would go and see them. And we just thought they were the the coolest, um, the kind of the mixture of uh, the mixture of kind of me- like, you know, of melody and harmony um, with like, you know, super kind of reckless high octane live shows and mixing those two things together. I think that was a big thing for, for Daryl. And then also, you know, the idea of putting in, um, uh, keys, like, you know, of of being like, no, we want to find cool synth parts and keys, um, kind of like some of the get up kids records, um, uh, of trying to mix that in because you didn't now, I think it's a little bit more common, but at the time you, everything was a little more stripped down in those days. It was like, well, let's just try to do two guitars, bass and drums at the max. Like that'll be as inventive as it gets because it's just so hard to lug all your gear Uh into the basements and stuff. Um, but we thought it would be cool to play with, uh, with these kind of synth patches and with this kind of old keyboard that gave it this kind of almost cars, you know, kind of like the cars on steroids kind of sound. That's so cool. Oh my God. Yeah. And like, it's, it, I can hear all those things, but then the interesting thing is probably because, you know, you're just kids. It, it also sounds really like lo-fi in the best way. It sounds really urgent kind of. It was, uh, it, that was the idea, you know, and I, I didn't actually play on the, on the records, on the recordings, you know, it was the kind of thing where I came in as a, as a, kind of uh daryl used to play everything he would play the the he would play the rhythm guitar and and uh and sing and then we had travis whiteside and rich Durkey uh on bass and uh and the and the other guitar and um i came in one summer because daryl wanted to try just doing the front man thing and just swinging the microphone and jumping into the crowd and stuff so i learned all of his parts but the the record i remember them playing the record that they made and i think they yeah i think they recorded it in like an afternoon so it did have that sense of like all right we got a limited amount of studio time we got to lay it down we got to get it out there and it was very, you know, very emotional and very, very, I mean, urgent, as you said, is the perfect word to describe it. That's so sick. I mean, what, so did, does that mean you like grew up going to shows and stuff? You know, I'm not as, I, I grew up going to much more, like it was actually much more tame than, than it, than it sounds. Like I grew up going to see a lot of, um, my mom and dad took me to a lot of folk shows. Like I went to the Philadelphia folk festival every summer, um, growing up cause my parents would take me there. And so, you know, I saw like, um, I saw it was a fractured version of the, of them by the time I saw them because members had left, but I saw like a, a version of the band when I was oh, cool. a kid and, and I saw um, I saw Richie Havens and Janice Ian and Chris Christopherson and Buddy Guy and a lot of kind of roots music icons um, when I was younger. And that was kind of more when I saw John Prine when I was really young. And so I, I liked singer songwriters. Um, and those were the kind of shows that I was kind of going to. Um, and then I, I kind of segued into kind of like. Oh, what would you describe, describe it as? I mean, you know, there was a couple that, I guess it's kind of like a, you know, perhaps a, a ner- like a ner- nerd rock of the late nineties, you know, right. like I, I went to a bunch of, they might be giants shows okay. and bare naked ladies. And there was this band from Canada called Moxie Fruvis. I was obsessed with, and wow. they kind of, they kind of had this kind of funny live show where it was like kind of tongue in cheek and satirical humor, but also delivered with a kind of rock and roll energy. Right. And I got, or, or like Ben Folds five too. I was way okay. into uh, before they split and Ben Folds went solo. And so I was listening to a lot of that and going to a lot of those kinds of shows um, before I got more into into punk shows and some more like extreme rock and roll bands. And then that, you know, really it was that summer when I was about 17 or 18 that I started going to more punk shows. That's amazing. That really sets the – that's like a perfect origin story to end up starring in the American Idiot musical, I feel Absolutely. like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean – 
yeah, that's because it's like it's kind of like a folk story, but then it has this like punk energy, and it's also mm-hmm. like pretty. I, maybe I'm wrong. I feel like I don't. I've never talked to like actors really. I don't know if it's offensive to say, but I feel like it's pretty camp sometimes. Uh, oh sure, no, <laughs> okay. no, no, you're not. You're to, yeah, you're totally not wrong. But yeah, no. I mean, there's got to yeah. be some. My fa- I, re- I wrote it down because it's my favorite line. Because uh, I've only seen the the Broadway idiot movie. But when, oh, that's when, right. When you say note to self. Get me the fuck out of Turd Town. Oh yes, yeah, <laughs> that's such a great line. You know, um, all of those, all of those, all of those lines and spoken words things that I said in the show, they came from. I want to say they came from a deluxe, uh, a deluxe release of American Idiot liner notes. Oh, where really? Where Billy okay. Joe had written all these kind of scribblings in these liner notes, <laughs> as if it was the lead character, the, the Jesus of Suburbia, and Michael Mayer, our director and book writer, just kind of lifted all of those and inserted them into the script to kind of tie together some of these transitional scenes. Amazing. That's so good. So, I mean, tell me about, you know, how did you end up in that musical? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was pretty organic. I mean, like when I looking back on it, I just feel like, Oh my God, I, I totally kind of tripped and fell into this uh, really epic show. But when I was about 20 years old, I tried out for this musical called Spring Awakening and I got the part and it ended up being like a three year journey of my life. I was a young actor that moved to New York in, in my late teens to pursue a career in acting. And um, uh, I got cast in my first musical, which was this show Spring Awakening. It started at a small theater in New York and ended up moving to Broadway and it became this big sensation and it won a bunch of Tony Awards. And we were kind of the toast of the town circa 2007. And our director, Michael Mayer, you know, was starting to get a lot of press and people were like, hey, you know, this guy's directed like a successful rock musical, which at that time there hadn't really been one in a while, not since like Rent or, you know, going back to, you know, the Who's Tommy. Uh, It had been a minute since like a rock music had been successful enough to thrive on Broadway. And so sure enough, the rock and rollers started coming out to see the show and uh, Billy Joe Armstrong came to see Spring Awakening. And um, uh, I was totally starstruck. I remember the night he was there. I saw him at the curtain call. He came back up into everyone's dressing room to meet up, to meet us all. Um, and I was a huge fan. I mean, I, I had been a fan of, you know, Green Day since, since Duke, he came out like, you know, most kids, of my generation, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, I was in the you know fourth or fifth grade, I think when, when they kind of hit, um, and, uh, but American idiot, that record had meant so much to me when it came out in 2004, I just adored it. I loved it. I played the CD until it, you know, skipped and wouldn't play anymore. Right. Um, and so I was totally starstruck by him. I just, I thought the world of him, I, I thought, and still think that he is just, you know, one of the great front mans of rock and roll history. And, and a consummate songwriter and showman. And uh, uh, after Spring Awakening ended, cut to about a year later, you know, Michael Mayer, the same director, called me up and he said, hey, you know, so Billy Joe really liked Spring Awakening and he's he's given me permission to kind of pursue making American Idiot into a stage show and do it like a musical, like a proper rock opera. And uh, he thought you were really great in, in your supporting role in Spring Awakening. And so he thinks, you know, you should play the lead. Wow. Um, you should play this, you know, whatever the Jesus of Suburbia character is going to turn into, you know, you should play that guy. And uh, I was like, I was, okay, this is incredibly surreal and dreamlike. I'm going to take it one step at a time, but sure, I'll, I'll, I'll try that. And so we did like a, a workshop in the spring of 2008 where we got a cast together and we just basically learned all of the record and we sang through the whole record and did some of those letters and those uh, liner notes moments that Billy had written and kind of strung together like a story arc. And Green Day flew out from Oakland with their manager and they just watched us perform kind of just standing at microphones with a band behind us, just watch this young cast, you know, play through and sing through the whole show. And, um, and that kind of sealed the deal. They were so blown away by it that they were like, go, go for it, go make the musical. Let's see what happens. And so that kicked off another three year journey of developing American idiot, which took me to the Berkeley repertory theater in Berkeley, California, kind of green days, old stomping grounds. We premiered the show there in 2009. It was a big success. And then we moved it to Broadway in 2010 and uh, I did it for about a year on Broadway. That's so cool. Oh my God. Yeah, um, it was surreal. Like also, I mean, there's, there's so many, it's just, it's such a like peculiar thing because, you know, you mentioned rock coming to Broadway, but then there's like, you look at the, 
American Idiot set and there's like black flag posters on the wall and everything. It feels oh, yeah. like it's kind of like taking it a step further of combining these two worlds. In Definitely. Chris, Christine Jones, our set designer, she just went she went for it. I mean, she created this incredible set that kind of felt like you were in this like, uh, you know, kind of epic, you know, squat warehouse kind mm. of DIY space, but like almost amplified, you know, to the max with this super high ceiling and these giant walls and kind of epic endless staircases. It <laughs> yeah. was a really fun playground to be on. But then in the documentary, like Donald Trump went to a show. A oh, premiere that, or I still I still can't wrap my head around that. He was <laughs> he was at our opening night. <laughs> You know, he came to our opening night and he was like, I think he was like, oh, what a terrific show. You know, I, I, I don't understand uh, what he was doing there. <laughs> Apparently the word on the street is because the show begins with kind of like all of these, like, like these sound bites of like a cha- like channels being changed on a, you know, kind of, you know, uh, on, a, on, on cable television. And there was a bunch of sound bites, including like, you know, this is American Idol and all of these things that would have been on TV and, you know, circa 2004. And one of the sound bites that they ended up using was Trump saying you're fired, you know, on the, <laughs> the apprentice. So I think he had to sign off on it. And I think, I think he was like, Oh, I, I gave them permission to use my voice. I better go see what the show is all about. Um, and for How- some strange reason, he came to see, uh, you know, what is a, a pretty liberal minded and, uh, um, you know, anti-establishment. I mean, we, it's, it's funny to say anti-establishment because, well, we were on Broadway, which is very establishment, right. um, you know, but we were trying to, you know, to keep the roots of the, uh, uh, of what Green Day had been going for alive. That's so amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. Just perfect. So many layers of irony. Bill, o, Bill O'Reilly too came to see it like two or three times. <laughs> really? Like, what is going on with these dudes? Like, did, had, did they, have they not heard the songs? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, oh my God. So, um, yeah, I mean, what? and then you did it on Broadway for a year, and then, uh, I mean, did the show just end, or what happened? Well, we made a cast record, too, which was really fun. We got to go to Electric Lady Studios in, uh, um, uh, in, in the West Village of New York City, and we did a whole cast album there um, that you can, you know, people can check out if they haven't heard the the cast version of the show. It's pretty cool. It's, it's, it's pretty loyal to, to the original record uh, with some, some pretty cool um, deviations here and there. This guy, Tom Kitt, who's an incredibly skilled musician, songwriter and arranger rearranged a few songs and added, you know, string arrangements to, uh, to a few of the numbers to make them different. But Green Day, actually, I always think this is fascinating and a lot of people don't know it, that Green Day actually played the, the all the all of the instruments on the cast album to Whoa. American Idiot. So they basically re-recorded their already Grammy Award winning record again with a new group of singers. And then I play guitar on a couple of the numbers. And wow. then it won, you know, it won a it won a Grammy for the um for the cast record. So I'm like, wow, I don't know if a band has ever won two Grammys for making basically the same record. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Oh my God. You're like basically a member of Green Day. You're you're like the other like there's that Jason guy and then there's right. uh, John, yeah. right? Jason White and then John Gallagher Jr. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we we certainly felt like we were part of the band. I remember remember we went to um you know they've got this amazing i don't know if they've played in a while but green day has this amazing alter ego band the foxborough hot tubs Mm -hmm. where they play these kind of these basement shows where they play kind of you know small cap kind of clubs and they you know first come first serve the the first 200 people to get tickets get in the door and uh they play like they write these songs that sound like um you know they it kind of sounds like the sonics or like the kinks it's like this kind of just super super uh you know kind of breakneck uh surf garage kind of 60s punk rock and they did a show while we were doing american idiot that we all went to at the bowery electric and it was one of the craziest shows i've ever been to it was just kind of an endless stream of stage diving and i mean i was covered in beer i mean <laughs> you, you would have thought that i had fallen into a river of beer by the end of it <laughs> That's the so show. Cool. everybody was just spraying beer all over each other so we definitely felt for that year 2010 you know, it did feel like we were kind of honorary members of, of Green Day for a brief period there. And, you know, they really opened up their world to us and they were so supportive. And um, and uh, we all got really super close with them while we were working on the show. And it was uh, 
it, it was a magical time in my life. Really. It was, uh, I've never been a part of something quite as intense or immediate, uh, as that performing that show was one of the wildest things I've, I've certainly ever, ever done as a, as an actor, as an artist, or even just a human. Right. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it seems like a kind of a one of a kind thing. I mean, it's, it's hard to compare it really to anything else, you know? It is. There hasn't really been, you know, I mean, there's been a, a, a attempts, you know, but I don't know if there's the ever spider, been I mean, there's the Spider-Man, like the YouTube right, Spider-Man yeah. musical, of course. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I, I, the turn off the dark. I have you, uh, have you considered adapting any other albums into musicals since then? You know, you could Let's do, see. you could do American Nightmare uh, background music. That would be That's true. I mean, you could, you know, I mean, you could definitely do, there's a few that I think of, these would never, I don't think they would ever work, but sometimes I think about like, you know, the monitor, the Titus Andronicus record. Oh, that's yeah, one of, that's, that's one of my favorite albums of all time. And, um, you know, it, it, it is for, for lack of better terminology, kind of a concept rock record. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I don't know if those guys would be, would be down for a, you know, for a, for that kind of adaptation of it, but we're like fucked up. David comes to life, yeah. you know? Yeah. Those are um, already, that, that's already like laid out. Waiting it's, to be done. I mean, it's basically like that. You wouldn't have to do much. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, you would have to do a lot, I'm sure, to make it happen. But the the through lines are there. On <laughs> yeah, those yeah, records. totally. You know, I would go see those. You know, yeah, I'd, I'd pay good money to go see those shows. I mean, was it the kind of thing though where you're like, oh, I could do that. I could develop more musicals, or was it like this was a way too much fucking work? I think you know, it's it's so much work. And then for me as an actor, when it comes to musicals, you know, it's funny. Like I I have to, I have to just like love the music mm. um, because you got to go out there and you got to sing it eight times a week. You know, right. you perform Tuesday to Sunday with one night off, and so you live inside the music almost more so than uh, the band would. Like I remember the green day guys coming to see us and being like, ah, you guys, like, I don't know how you do eight shows in a row, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, two shows on Saturday, two shows on Sunday. That's the traditional Broadway schedule. And Billy was like, I couldn't, I can't do that. Like if I had to sing, if I had to do eight green day shows in a row every week, I, I would, I, we'd be toast. You know, yeah. we, we do like, you know, we do three on two off four on one on, you know, like they'll, they build in breaks when you're on the road for a band because it's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a big giant ask. So uh, you got to love it. You got to really want to get out there and sing those songs. And luckily for me, I mean, I, that record, I, I just think it's, it's pitch perfect. I mean, I just don't think that there's a dud on it. I think the songwriting and the melody and the, 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 the emotion that, you know, was obviously poured into those songs is uh, absolutely contagious and, 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 you know, combustible and uh and it was why i loved doing it and it's probably why i had I, I had up until this year i hadn't done another musical because i'd just been like well that kind of spoiled me you know i i it, you've got to find songs as good as the songs on american idiot to justify getting up on stage and i just did one actually with michael mayer the same director as spring awakening and american idiot we just premiered a musical that's based on the songs of the Avid brothers, which is a little bit of a detour. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a kind of punk rock spirit, but they, they have, it's much more of a kind of Americana bluegrass sound that those guys write with, but we just premiered it at the Berkeley rep theater where I, or where I premiered American idiot in right. 2009. So things are kind of coming full circle again in a weird way for me. So that one's called swept away, right? It's called swept yeah. away. Yes. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. the new musical. We're, we're hoping that it's going to be, you know, on stage in New York within the next year, but only time will tell. Cool. Awesome. Well, is there anything else you want to plug before I let you go or? Um, no, I mean, well, I guess if people are, are curious about, you know, if, um, if anyone's listening that doesn't know about spring awakening, which really is the, how I got into musical theater in the first place, there's a documentary that's going to air on HBO and HBO max starting May 3rd. Um, that's all about the history of spring awakening called, uh, those you've known. So if anyone wants to kind of check that out and then they can check out the Broadway idiot, uh, documentary as well, which right. I think is, is out there to stream. Cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank man. you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. As John Gallagher Jr. mentioned, the third town line is taken from the liner notes of the deluxe edition of American Idiot. So what better to do now than to read them? Dear me, today I forgot to shower. Again. I'm going to meet up with the usual suspects. Again. For another afternoon of shit talking and cigarettes and blah fucking blah. Buy me a beer, sir. Meet me at the centre of my miserable existence, turd boy. 
Ain't it neat? God taught you to skin me alive, or was it my stepdad? I think he forgot to shower today also. Is anyone noticing a pattern here? Oh well, he doesn't get fucking laid either. Sweet Jesus, can't a guy get a damn cigarette around here? Note to self, get me the fuck out of turd town. Let's start a bow, shall we? J. To the city. I held up my local convenience store to get a bus ticket. Actually, I stole the money from mum's dresser. Actually, he said I'm with the cash. Fucking bitch. Give me sidewalks at the shadows. My own private war. Rally the troops. This place is big enough for all the fuck-ups in the underbelly. Shine your light on this, motherfucker. I got plans, baby. Tell the bishop there's a resistance occurring, you bastard. Everything is so fucking black and white. And the good guys ain't wearing red, white or blue. Hang your dark cloud over your dirty old town. The end of the world is over. This is hell. And it's televised. My riot, my love, my country. The dawning of a new city, new faces, new voices. My voice, my city. J. Is life imitating me? Or is this not what I imagined? I jerked off into oblivion this evening. My dream is turning blue. But I thought good guys don't wear blue. No one seems to agree on anything these days. The city. It's misting over the skyscrapers. The cement feels so damp yet pretty all at once. Is rage imitating life? I feel like a civil war, like a knife in my heart. I got an axe to grind and it's splitting my head open. No friends, no girls. I need both. I'm on the verge. J. I shot drugs for the first time today. Thank you, Jimmy. Now we're getting somewhere. Nowhere. We don't need no stinking badges. What? Who said that? This is good. My ass took a beating. I forgot to take a shower again. Holy water, I am the denial, but at least I got a friend. Mom, you were right. I did make a friend at camp. Remember when Dad, Brad, said I would never amount to anything? Well, I won up to him. I amount to nothing. I knew you'd be proud. I got a place to stay, by the way. I'm on the couch tour from hell. I still have a few be- books left, so I should be fine for a while. Send my love to the Seven Eleven, and yes, I am Satan. P.S. Send money. J. My heart is like a bomb. Went to a show, house, last night. Band sucked. But she's got my mother's eyes. Blue like my dreams. Good guys do wear black. She calls me Jimmy. It's better than what's his face. Could this be lust or the dawning? She thinks I'm full of shit, but she thinks I'm cute. Or is it the opposite? But we do agree on one thing. Good guys don't wear red, white and blue. J. Also written out in this style is the letter from what's her name to Jimmy, which is the Kathleen Hanna portion of Letterbomb, so I'll not read all that. Dear Dad, or God, or whatever, I stole some money from what's her name. Actually, she me the cash. I got a bus ticket home. I'm nothing, just like you. Too bad you'll never read this. I met the girl of my dreams. She's dead now. To me, anyway. I'm coming home in victory, arms open wide, sitting by a greyhound toilet. Justice was served. The end of the world was hell all along. You were just too stupid to notice. That's why I love you. First stop, convenient store. I got lies to tell. Glory never felt so good. I'll buy my own beer. Thank you very much. J. P.S. Take a fucking shower. And then are all the lyrics to Rock and Roll Girlfriend um, by Trey Cool, which are written out like a postcard to Jimmy. And then finally, after the lyrics of What's a Name, is a page that says, And that was that, or so it seemed. Is this the end or the beginning? All I know is she was right. I am an idiot. It's even on my birth certificate in so many words. This is my rage. This is my love. This is my town. This is my city. This is my life.